And our Thursday night football city tonight is Glendale, Arizona, and University of Phoenix Stadium. Our matchup in the NFC West, it's the Seattle Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals. As you come inside, we look at the standings in the division. Seattle alone on top, just one blemish on their record. Arizona with a win tonight can move within a game of the top spot. We welcome you to week seven of the NFL, everybody. Brad Nessler with Mike Mayock. Partner, five and one for the Seahawks right now. A game they felt like they should have went against Indianapolis. Last year at the end of the season, nobody was hotter the final two months of the year. And despite their loss to the Falcons in the divisional playoffs, a lot of people think this is a team built for a Super Bowl run. Look, if you're going to get Seattle, Brad, now is the time. Both starting tackles are out of the lineup, but Giacomini, Oakland will be back in the next couple of weeks. Beware. Percy Harvin is practicing again. One of the most explosive playmakers in the NFL will be back. And that young quarterback in his second year, Russell Wilson, he gets better every time I see him. So when you add it all up, they're already 5-1. and one. I only think they're going to get better, so now's the time. All right, well, let's talk about the Cardinals. They've had the Seahawks number here. They've won six of the last seven, including the last two seasons here. What do they have to do tonight to keep that streak alive? I think the formula is simple, but it's difficult to execute. Number one, you got to protect your quarterback. Carson Palmer, much better when he's a rhythm and timing passer. Number two, trust that defense. Arizona's got playmakers on all three levels. I particularly like Matthew and Peterson on the back end. And finally, got to win that special teams battle. If you do all three, you'll get this game in the fourth quarter, and this place will be rocking and rolling. There's a future Hall of Famer on offense for the Cardinals named Larry Fitzgerald but he's got his issues tonight. With more on that, here's Alex. Hey, Brad, well, listen, Larry Fitzgerald coming off his best game of the season on Sunday against San Francisco, but he's far from being 100% healthy. He's been battling hamstring issues all season long. First it was his left, now it's his right. When I asked him yesterday how close he was to being 100% healthy, he said, I've been better, I've been worse, but I'm good enough to go against a physical and aggressive Seattle secondary. He tells me that the key tonight for him is winning his matchups and doing it at the line of scrimmage. It'll be interesting interesting to see if he's able to be as explosive as he needs to be, Brad. Being the pro's pro that he is, he called it an occupational hazard, the hamstrings. Bruce Arians, longtime NFL assistant now in his first season as an NFL head coach. And on the other side, Pete Carroll, who's done a remarkable job of the Seahawks in his fourth season. Arizona won the toss. The Cardinals want the football. That means Javier Arenas is back deep. And Steven Hoskins has got it teed up. Already noisy here at University of Phoenix Stadium. Week seven of the NFL is underway. Arenas, about nine yards deep, will take a knee. So we'll see Carson Palmer. He's used 14 different guys so far this year. Coming in, seven touchdown passes, but 11 interceptions. And he's taken some heat out here this week for the two he threw in the loss to San Francisco last week. Three wide receivers on the first snap coming up for Arizona. Out of the shotgun. And a quick throw out. Wide receiver screen complete. Andre Roberts. But the ball comes out at the end. And I think they're going to call him down as guess who comes up with a loose ball, <laughs> Richard Sherman. Brad, when I watch film, one of my favorite teams to watch is Seattle, especially on defense. They fly to the football. They compete. They're aggressive. They're, they're a reflection of their head football coach, Pete Carroll. Everything is competition. I'm not sure the fans here realize you're supposed to be quiet for your <laughs> offense. Wow. <laughs> Seahawks don't give up anything on opening drive. Second down and nine. With Carson Palmer under center. They'll try it on the ground. They had a nice gain out across the 25 for Richard Mendenhall. As we take a look at Arizona tonight, the Cardinals' difference makers on offense. Larry Fitzgerald, a 10th year player, only playing at plus or minus 75 or 80%. They've got to get some production out of him. And I, I think the X Factor, Andre Ellington, the sixth round rookie out of Clemson. I think he can be a difference maker both out of the backfield and catching the football underneath against some of those linebackers. He's got more first downs, Andre Ellington, than any other rookie in the league. Let's see if they try to utilize him here on third down and three. Play action. There's the throw out to Ellington. Made one man miss. There's the first down, his 20th of the year. 
Nuke Hopkins, also out of Clemson, is number two on that list. Not bad. Boy, I like this play. You're going to see a little bit of motion right here but for the intended receiver here, Ellington. Nice job. There's the ball. Fanica out front. He cuts back behind Fanica. Make the first guy miss, which is what Ellington can do. And, Brad, I thought he was a steal in the sixth round. And so does his coach, Bruce Arians. First down at the 32. Mendenhall back in as a tailback. And he'll get the call. Backs his way across the 35. Out to the 36-yard line. Earl Thomas made the stop defensively for the Seahawks. As we take a look at their defense and the difference makers on that side. Earl Thomas being one of them. It's hard to figure out how to put there. I think their front has more edge guys than anybody in the league. But on the back end, Sherman presses you on every snap of every game. And Earl Thomas might have the best range of any safety in the league. Regular, regular. Ellington comes back in, but he comes out as an extra wide receiver to the bottom of your screen on second down and six. That's an interesting matchup down here on the safety. Palmer's looking that way. Quick slant in and out of his hands. Catchable, maybe a little bit high. Yeah, a little high and behind, but Andre Ellington, after what we just talked about, being a difference maker, having an opportunity to change this game a little bit, that's the matchup you want. You got the big safety on him, Chancellor. You got to make that catch. Excuse me, Browner. And you talk about a big secondary. Oh. Browner at almost 6'4", 221 pounds. Number 39, as he comes out to meet Jerron Brown on third down and six. Yeah, this is Bruce Arians. Spread the field, let Carson Palmer see it. Ball's got to come out quickly. Blitz. Palmer got it out, and it's a first down to Roberts. Nice throw and catch, and the drive stays alive. They pick up eight. And remember, this is who they are. They're going to challenge you on every snap. The wide receivers have got to win. So he's a timing and rhythm quarterback. The ball's got to come out. Good job by the wide receiver that time. Andre Roberts working on his defensive back. That was number 20 right there, Jeremy Lane. he got to win these matchups if you're going to have a chance to win the football game. For them. Patrick Peterson's in on offense. Seventh play yeah, of the Cardinal drive. Fitzgerald gets in the backfield. Play action. Palmer's in trouble. Down he goes. Thrown down by Tony McDaniel. Huge loss way back inside the 30. You know, you can bring Patrick Peterson in all you want, and, and you can get fancy, but at the end of the day, you've got to protect your quarterback. Smith is their best pass protection tailback, but he misses a block right there. He runs right by Tony McDaniel, and if you're going to tell me he's your best pass protection tailback, you can't run by an unblocked defender. Loss of 14. And a good-looking drive just became second down at 24. Michael Floyd, the motion man. Palmer fires. Oh, nice throw. And that is Michael Floyd. <laughs> that was funny, Brad. You said good catch. I said great throw. <laughs> and it was really both. And Michael Floyd has a big-bodied wide receiver out of Notre Dame. He threw it away from the leveraged corner. Now remember, it's going to be a street fight all day long. Off-man coverage. Look at the inside leverage by Browner. You've got to throw it away and trust that your wideout's going to make the play. The Cardinals haven't picked up a third down this long all year. In fact, you get past third and seven, they can't pick up a first down. And yeah, they're 0 for Autumn. <laughs> this one is third down at 14. Palmer flushed out of the pocket. This is where he's not too comfortable. He's going to get what he can, get out of bounds. Nothing wrong with a punch, so it'll be the Seahawks who don't allow a point on an opening drive again tonight. Yeah, and hey, this was Cliff Averill. They've got so many guys to get pressure. It's Averill going to work on Winston here, and he's going to flush Palmer out of the pocket. You, Russell Wilson will run forever, but Carson Palmer can't. So all you have to do is get him off his spot, and at that point, the play is counterfeit. Zastadola punt. Into the mile in the air. Golden Tate on the other end. Inside the five fields it. But gets a positive return. Runs into his own man and gets out around the 17-yard line. Nine minutes, 44 seconds remaining first quarter. 
Russell Wilson and the Seahawks offense will have their first chance when we come back. Thursday Night Football is delivered by Papa John's, official pizza sponsor of the NFL. And by GMC. Vote for the Never Say Never moment of the week at NFL.com slash GMC. A long time ago, Marshawn Lynch's mom used to say, it's time for your energy pills. And those are Skittles. <laughs> and he's all set to go. And he's one of the best in the NFL. Seahawks work from their own 17-yard line. Russell Wilson on the shotgun with Marshawn Lynch flanking him there. And his own read, and now Russell Wilson takes off on his own and gets 11. And tiptoes out of bounds, unharmed. First down, Seattle. Russell Wilson in his second year out of Wisconsin by way of North Carolina State. And 12 of his last 14 games, he's won. Phenomenal rookie season, won the job last year in the preseason over some guys that were making a lot more money. And some of those guys are still making a lot more money and they're barely playing any football. But that's why I like Pete Carroll. It's all about competition and best man wins. Sidney Rice, the motion man, on the 28-yard line. Play action. The throw goes out to the tight end. And that's Luke Wilson down the sideline. Luke Wilson, the rookie out of Rice, and a pickup of 23. Arizona's excellent with A-gap pressure. Washington's going to come free, but it's the athletic ability of Wilson again. Feels the pressure, balls out quickly. Now Luke Wilson, who was kind of the, quote, other tight end at Rice, because remember, Vance McDonald went in the second round to San Francisco. This kid has really developed well. 6'4", 250-pounder, and he gets it into Cardinal territory at the 49-yard line. Coleman, the fullback over there with Lynch now. Yep. Straight back to throw, screen pass, Marshawn Lynch, blockers in front. Nice open field tackle by Darrell Washington, the inside linebacker. We take a look at the Seahawks offensively tonight and their difference makers. Now, Golden Tate for me has become a go-to wide receiver. He's better with the ball after the catch. He's like a natural running back, and Marshawn Lynch Kind of like the Skittles, you got to feed him. He needs 20 to 25 carries a game, and this guy gets more and more in beast mode the more you give him the football. Hurst, the motion man on second down and seven. This will be Marshawn Lynch. Cuts outside, heading to the edge. He got it, got the first down, and then seven. Tough run. And 15 yards later, first down Seattle. Yeah, we talked about Luke Wilson, the, the tight end H-back from Seattle does a great job on the back on the block here watch him come across the scrimmage line and give Lynch the opportunity to make the cut he wants bounces it outside now you're one-on-one -on -one in the open field that's a difficult tackle and Gerard Powers misses it Seahawks have had three plays on this drive of 10 yards or more including a scramble by Wilson and they've got a first down at the Cardinals 31 Russell Wilson flushed out of the pocket, going to throw it long, got a man, touchdown. <laughs> Sidney Rice on a broken play, 31-yard touchdown. And, and Rice sat it down in the curl area, and when he saw his quarterback running for his life, he broke it deep. This is pretty awesome. This is why this kid is so special. Watch what happens. Sidney Wright's right here. There he is. He's running curl. Then he sees his quarterback. He breaks it deep. His quarterback trusts it, throws it to the back of the end zone, and that drive was all about Russell Wilson. Was it ever? His ninth touchdown pass of the year for Sidney Rice. That's his third scoring catch. Hoshka's in for the point after. It's good. An 83-yard drive in just five plays. A little over two and a half minutes. For Wilson to Rice, 7-0 Seattle. Coming up on Tuesday, Pat Summerall is the standard in broadcasting, but his demons almost denied the world his gift. A story of redemption and a voice etched in time. Pat Summerall, a football life Tuesday at 9 Eastern, only on NFL Network. Can't wait for that one. There was never any better. There will never be one better than Pat Summerall. I loved your story about being a little kid and coming up to him years ago in Minnesota. you gotta, you got to tell that story. I will sometime.
Quick drive by the Seahawks to take the lead on the road. And Ahashka with a kickoff. Javier Arenas is going to bring this one from about eight yards deep. Straight up the middle. And he's not going to make it to the 20. Out to the 16-yard line. And that's where the Cardinals will have it. Their second offensive series. A lot of Seahawks fans in here tonight making some noise. Their team up by seven. Back in the desert on a beautiful night. Pete Carroll Seahawks up 7-0. Second offensive series for the Cardinals. They had a good thing going on their opening drive. And Mike, as you said 20 minutes ago, keep that guy upright. Well, they didn't. A sack and a loss of 14, and that's what stopped them on their first offensive series. Exactly. Here comes a blitz. And running right into it is Rashard Mendenhall. Only got about a yard. You mentioned that sack from the previous series, and really it was all about Tony McDaniel, and I contend that this Seattle team has more outside edge guys than any team in the league, but also they get more inside pressure. Watch McDaniel here working inside. Watch the strength and power. He gets under Bradley Sowell, closes on the quarterback. Carson Palmer's not going to get away from anybody, and Brad, they've got three or four guys inside, three or four guys outside. They're tough to block, man. Carson Palmer sets like playing five defensive ends on every snap. Here's Ellington going wide and getting hammered by Cam Chancellor. And a loss of a couple, and here's the long yardage situation the Cardinals didn't want to find themselves in. Watch the right tackle here, Winston, get jacked back. And, and this is just a, he's going to pull out. Watch, it's, I think it's a defensive back that jacks him right like that. Yeah, it, oh my goodness, that's Cam Chancellor. Chancellor did the whole play. Got underneath a 300-pounder, put him on his back, and made the tackle. That's awesome. Well, on the first series, the Cardinals finally converted a third and long. See if they can get another one. Empty backfield on third down and 10. Palmer throws, catching the back end of the football is Larry Fitzgerald. First down. You no, know, it was neat there, Brad, was the ball was out of his hands before Fitzgerald even got out of his break. We talk about a timing and a rhythm quarterback, and this is what you're going to see. Fitzgerald's in a tight split. Ball's out. He hadn't even made his break. And if you're going to beat these corners, and that time it was Thurman, the nickel, look at the ball. It's a beautiful throw, and what a catch. He's something. Oh, he Both is. Both on and off the field, number 11. He was fun to talk to, wasn't he? He sure is. Voted the nicest guy in the NFL by some media people. We agree. Five minutes and change remaining first quarter. Cardinals trying to put together a drive here. And it's Mendenhall on the inside for a short game, maybe got a yard. Alex talked a little bit in her pregame about the hamstring of Fitzgerald and what it might mean. And first of all, I give him credit because when he's in the game, he's going to draw some double coverage, even if he's 75%. So that'll help other players on the team. And secondly, you know, I was talking to him on the field yesterday, and he said you just got to push through it. That's yep. part of being a pro. That 140 straight second only to Tony Gonzalez of the Falcons, who's got 200 straight game receptions. Second and nine. Palmer flushed out of the pocket. Throws and caught by Andre Roberts. And that time, Carson Palmer wasn't in his comfort zone, and he still delivered. And he wanted Larry Fitzgerald. Came off of him. Let's see the feet. There's the toe tap. Does he control the football? Sure looks like it. That looks like a catch. There's control of the ball. Both feet down. As long as he's got control, which I believe he does, that's fine. Roberts caught 64 passes a year ago, including five touchdowns. Carson Palmer, six out of seven here in the first quarter. Gonna go long. Fitzgerald tipped and intercepted. Picked off out of by bounds. Earl Thomas. Out of bounds, they're saying. There's a little argument going on with the, with the referees right now. Ball is underthrown. Browner does a great job stripping the football. Boy, that looked like an interception to me. Earl Thomas coming over the top. Now, there's some separation here. Larry Fitzgerald stacks them. That's a great route and an underthrown football. That's an interception all day long. If so, it's Earl Thomas' fourth of the year. Seattle is challenged that the pass was intercepted. 
As long as he's got possession all the way through. Yeah. That, good challenge by Seattle. We'll come back and check on it in a minute. Thursday Night Football is brought to you by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Taking a look at the interception by Earl Thomas of the Seahawks on the last play. Ball was tipped by Browner on an excellent play. Now, where's control of the football, right? Now, I believe he's got control. The left foot hits the ground. The right knee, I believe, hits the ground before anything touches out. That should be an interception. And, and give Brown a credit. That was a heck of a play. Ernie France is the replay official. And Terry McCauley, our referee tonight. The defender controlled the ball and got his knee down inbounds. It is interception. Yep. It is Seattle's ball, first and 10 on the 28. Seattle is not charged with a timeout. So, the 14th overall pick in the 2010 draft, Earl Thomas, a guy you loved, and that's his 14th career interception. Yeah, it was kind of fun, Brad, watching him and Eric Burry come out that year in the draft, and Burry ended up going early, Kansas City. So, the problems for Carson Palmer continue. His 12th interception... Remember last week, he threw two early interceptions, put the defense in bad positions on the 6-yard line and the 11-yard line against San Francisco, but the defense held him to field goal. This is a big drop. Seahawks take over at the 28-yard line. Wilson under center will throw on first down. Sidearms are incomplete intended for Marshawn Lynch. Remember he talked to us last night a little bit about his footwork was what he's working on the most. Right. That was a situation where he didn't reset his feet because he was in such a hurry to get the ball out. I don't mind the, the sidearm throw, but it was the feet that got him caught up there. Seahawks haven't found themselves in long yardage much in this first quarter. Second down and 10. High backfield. There's a stretch play with Lynch. Got a nice block from his fullback. And he takes it out for six or seven. Bringing up a third down and about three. A lot of different things you can do on third down and three when you got a quarterback like number three. Well, if you look at that first drive, Brad, the first play was zone read, which he took advantage, then bootleg, then the busted play. It just highlighted who this kid is. Yeah. Empty backfield. Yeah. Low snap. Wilson on a crossing route. Pop. Zach Miller's got it, and I think forward progress has the first down. Oh, he threw that one into some traffic, but he put it right where it had to be. Yeah, and it was a low snap by Max Unger. Maybe some of the baseball skills of Russell Wilson fielding almost a ground ball. Eyes up, ball out immediately because another free runner. Just a quick throw to first. It's all, it was like a snap throw, right? <laughs> That's what it was. Good coverage by Jeremiah Bell, but they moved the chains. To the 40-39 yard line, first down. Robert Turbin in the Seahawk backfield. Cardinals have had the football a lot more, but the Seahawks have the lead. And are trying to stretch it here as we're down near the two-minute mark. Turbin, nice run. Calais Campbell, who we weren't even sure would be playing in this football game, made the tackle. It, James Carpenter, the left guard, did a nice job pulling out. And they, they like the soft box there. So twice as many plays, basically, for the Cardinals. At 94 yards and seven points. Or Seattle. It's the story of the Cardinals offense. They move the ball, but two big mistakes. An interception and a sack. Yep. Second down and a long two. Play fake. Wilson loads and fires long. Man in front's going to be interference. Oh, Sidney yeah. Rice. Well, maybe not. Sidney Rice certainly thinks so. Tyron Matthew. Wow. Look at Pete. Pete Carroll thinks so. And I'm sorry I called it without seeing a flag. 
That was a double move. It was a double move by Sidney Rice on Tyron Matthew. Matthew's eyes got caught. He held him once. That was already a penalty. Now he trips him. Now that's the correct non-call because that was an in inadvertent tangling of the feet. The referees are told not to make that call if the feet get caught up. The words of a defensive back named Mike Mayock. Folks. <laughs> that's a, that's coming out of the referee <laughs> seminar this summer. Go down at two. Wilson's in trouble. Tough to catch. Wait a minute. The referee's trying to blow the play dead. We got a flag. Seattle. It was so loud. We had about half the players playing. Prior to the snap. Half the announcers announcing. <laughs> So we got a timeout with a minute 36 remaining first quarter. Late first quarter here at University of Phoenix Stadium where the Seahawks on the road lead 7-0. They had an 83-yard touchdown drive in just two and a half minutes. Russell Wilson to Sidney Rice, a 31-yard touchdown pass, and now they've got it again. Third down and two. Golden Tate in motion, sets up on the left side, and Wilson, no play fake really, just flips it out to Tate, he's got a first down. And there's those running back skills Mike was talking about earlier, picking up about an extra five yards, a pickup of 14 overall. And that's a bunch set, and, and keep in mind, here's Tate, and there's the man coverage. When you got to run through human traffic to get to the receiver, it slows you down. Excellent throw, and as you said, Ness, that's what he is. He's a former running back that looks best with the ball tucked under his arm. First down at the 40. Russell Wilson, 5 out of 7 with the touchdown here in the first quarter. Back to an eye backfield with Marshawn Lynch. They fake it to him. Wilson comes up throwing, complete again out to Golden Tate. Hey, Brad, there, there's not a better indication of an exciting young quarterback than three plays from the first drive. First play of the game, zone read. This is a planned run. The tight end with blocking, he picks up the first down. Then quick play action, balls out, snap to his tight end. Another big play. And finally, a bust in the secondary because of his ability to run the football. Safety jumps the curl. He gets out wide, throws it. Three plays. What a talented young man. Now he gives it off to Marshawn Lynch, who's got another first down, and he's dragging yeah. tacklers with him down to the 26-yard line. That guy will wear you out. Eight straight games, he's had at least 15 carries, dating back to last year, when he had almost 1,600 on the ground. Derek Coleman, his fullback, had a good block there, and, you know, Brad, it's just so hard. Oh, there's one, man. Look like Kid Rock and Pink. <laughs> and the one. Seahawks on the road looking pretty good so far. Leading by a touchdown and threatening again. Pete Carroll earlier on a non-interference call that was the right call. Mike called it and the officials agreed. And his quarterback Russell Wilson who's been almost perfect through the first 15 minutes. Ninth play of the Seahawk drive. Right now at the 26-yard line of Arizona. Blitz coming off the corner. Marshawn Lynch drops for no gain. Very few times you're going to hear that as Rucker makes the play. Mike, good first quarter. Competitive. The only problem, the Cardinals continue to self-destruct. Yeah, the sack on the first series when they're moving the football. Then the interception, which let's give Browner and Earl Thomas right. some credit. was awesome. And then on the flip side, you know, the kid is as, as advertised. Russell Wilson is really awesome to watch. He's got him driving again, trying to go up a couple of scores here. The second down and nine. Just outside the 25. Wilson pressure, throws to the corner to Tate, diving attempts. Patrick Peterson was covering, and covering well. And a flag down. John Abraham, I think, got to Russell Wilson late. Patrick Peterson loves press man coverage. He gets his hands on. Now he's going to run to the underneath hip, look for the Correction. football. Half the That's the textbook. Goal. 
And now here comes Abraham. And remember with the quarterback, your strike zone is between the shoulders and the knees. Anything above that is going to be an automatic penalty. John Abraham, who leads all active players in sacks in the National Football League, was a step too late. And it's an automatic first down for the Seahawks in the red zone now. First penalty of the football game. And it gives Seattle the line of scrimmage first and 10 up the 13-yard line. Doug Baldwin, the motion man to the top of the screen. And Wilson changing things up. I have to hurry. Flag down. False start. Offense number 67. Five-yard penalty. First down. The left tackle with a false start. Yeah, Brad, we talked in the open that, that two new tackles. There's McQuist and just kind of, that's on him. A little bit of a flinch. Russell Okung, the, the normal left tackle, former first-round pick, was on injured reserve designated for return. And Bruno Giacomini, the right tackle, is out right now, inactive with the knee. They at least got their center back, Max Unger. Yeah, he came back last week, and that really helped. First down and 15. Lynch inside. John Abraham draped all over him. The ball came out. So Abraham trying to make up for that penalty a couple of minutes ago. See, Abraham was on him early and rips the ball out. But I think Lynch jumped back on him. By the way, last week, close to the goal line, Lynch put one on the ground, Brad, and the defensive lineman tried to scoop and score, and he scooped it right back into Russell Wilson's right. arms. Marshawn Lynch has got to hold on to the football. Pete Carroll was not happy with their turnover. Second down and 13 at the 15. Three wide outs to the right of Russell Wilson. He's going to come back the other way across the field, and Zach Miller's got it for a touchdown. Perfect strike to the tight end. He did a really nice job widening Jeremiah Bell. Got inside. It's a picture-perfect throw and a great catch. Zach Miller, who played his high school football right here at Desert Vista back in the day. Big touchdown catch on his hometown turf. Another long drive by the Seahawks. Watch him widen 37 at the top of your screen, which gives space for the quarterback to throw the football. Just a beautifully thrown and caught ball. Hoshka in for the point after. It's good. So Seattle, a team that struggled a little bit on the road this year, despite going 2-1, and one, off to a great start in Glendale. 72-yard drive for another touchdown, 14-0. Thursday Night Football is brought to you by KFC. KFC plus football equals couch gating. And brought to you by Craftsman. Beautiful night in Glendale, Arizona with the roof open at University of Phoenix Stadium. Sunday's game day on NFL Network. We get things going. Set your alarm 7 o'clock Eastern time. Game day first. Game day morning takes you up to the kickoffs. After the afternoon games, game day highlights at 7.30. And then we top it off after the Sunday night game with NFL game day. At 11.30, big day on Sunday on NFL Network. 14 to nothing, Seattle on the road. Kind of cool shot there. The roof opened, which is atypical here. Typically during the day, they don't like those 100 degree temperatures beating down on the players and fans. It's perfect out here tonight, though. Yep. Haskew's kick. Out of your arenas just has to watch it go out the back of the end zone. Take you back to the touchdown. You know, too often we get on defense backs for the obvious play, but watch Carlos Dansby. He's got to carry the tight end through the seam area and help his safety out. But what happens, he gets vision on Marshawn Lynch, and he's going to jump it along with the outside linebacker. That's on Dansby as much as it's on Bell. And you talk about ball placement. Wilson, <laughs> two third downs he converted on that drive. And then the 15-yard touchdown pass. And now the Cardinals, Mike, you've got to answer here. Yeah. Palmer is going to try. Deep sideline. That's a dangerous spot over there. Richard Sherman was waiting for it and almost picked it off. 
It's a street fight out wide. Richard Sherman's going to win this one against Michael Floyd. I give Michael Floyd some credit for knocking this away. Hip to hip, Sherman sees the football. Floyd just comes up and knocks it away, which he turns into the D back here. Nice job. Live to play another down. He's got four interceptions in the last three games against Arizona. Second and ten. Maybe a yard for Andre Ellington. That's about it. Now comes Smith. The outside linebacker made the stop, and it's third down and long again. And this is where Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator, and these guys get you. They're up 14-0. You, you tend to abandon the run game. And then, the, you know, the, the legion of boom, or whatever they call these guys, <laughs> they're going to latch on you on the outside, and they're going to force you to throw the football. And, and this is going to be a tough night for Carson Palmer if they don't get some points in the board soon. They're one for the season on third down and all. Look out from behind, and down goes Palmer again, and it's Chris Clemens. Bradley Sal, the left tackle, had his hands full last week against San Francisco, and it's not going to get any better against Chris Clemens. Kick slide out, just way too easy. Sal's got to get stronger. He's got to stay more square. Boy, I'll tell you, they bring off, they bring Clemens off the edge, Bruce Irvin off the edge, Averill. Yeah. It's like having five defensive ends out there sometimes, according to Palmer. And another punt coming up. Golden Tate runs up on it, takes it to 47. Tate, he's got an opening right now. Flags are down. He's probably going to be gone, but I think we're going to have an illegal block as he dives in with some style points. We'll wait and see. Tate thinks he has a tough game. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 57. 10-yard penalty. First down. Timeout. Michael Morgan with the illegal block. And Antoine Kaysen, the guy that's down, but he's up and all right. Carson Palmer hasn't been up and all right tonight. Mike, Arizona lucky it's not 21 to nothing. There's Morgan, Mike Morgan right here with the push in the back on Bernard. Really not even necessary. Ironically, Pete Carroll recruited Mike Morgan to USC many years ago. Negates a 54-yard punt return for a score, but still they get great field position at the 48-yard line. Marshawn Lynch. Lynch gets to the linebacking core into the secondary and just shy of a first down run. And Brad, what did we talk about at the beginning for Arizona to win tonight? You know, they got to let, they got to protect Carson Palmer. That hasn't happened, right? What was the next thing? Special teams was special key. teams was number three. That was yeah, number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And number two was trust your defense, and they put their defense in, in some real bad holes so far. They're 0 for three. 0 for three tonight. Second down and one here. For the Seahawks back in Cardinal territory. Lynch should get the first down, I think, with forward progress. Maybe not. It's a really good play by Darnell Dockett there. He can still play. 32 years old, 10th year out of FSU. He got off the block, I, I believe, that time by Michael Bowie, the right tackle, made a heck of a play. One of the captains of the defense, three-time Pro Bowler. And it is third down and short. They've got some building blocks in defense, Arizona. Yeah, they do. Need a stop here. They stack everybody up close. Marshawn Lynch. And second effort is going to be very close. Yeah. Dan Williams almost had him in the backfield. When Dan Williams, the former first-round pick, is healthy, he's pretty special. And let's see where they have it. Pete working the sideline, not part of the chain gang. <laughs> I, I said Pete on the sideline, he was warming up. He thro throws the ball to warm up. Every, he, he and Harbaugh. I said, Pete, what are you like, 62? He said something like that, Mike. Looks like he's about 42. <laughs> he really does. He's so active. And let's see what we've got. Ooh, this is going to be credit card close. That much short. Oh, yeah. How much doubt is there going for it, right? 
with a 14-point lead on the road. I would be alert. He's going to put his heavy personnel, and I would be alert play action. Russell Wilson run. They were stopped short on second and third down, and the Cardinals come up with a fourth down stop. It's that close. On the defensive back, I'm playing pass. Wilson under center. Try to do it himself. I don't wow. think so. Wow. Calais Campbell and John Abraham. And the Cardinals are going to take over on downs. Tight end Luke Wilson got blown up. And then Russell Wilson did. Great job by the Cardinals defense as they stop Russell Wilson short of the first and they take over on offense. Thursday Night Football is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Get the $10 any pizza deal now and create your favorite pizza for just 10 bucks. And by Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Great play by Calais Campbell on that fourth and inches stop on Russell Wilson. Well, actually, you know what happens, Brad? Take a look here. That's Frosty Rucker, who's going to beat Luke Wilson across his face along with Calais Campbell, and the two of them bang him into the backfield. And if, he, if you're a rookie fifth-round pick out of Rice like Luke Wilson, you better get your head across him. Big stop. Remember, the punt return would have been 21 to nothing. Yep. They were driving again, and now the Cardinals have a chance. If they can quit stepping on their own foot on offense. And no gain on the play for Mendenhall. Mendenhall spent five years with the Steelers before signing here with the Cardinals. Came in as their leading rusher with 259 yards on the ground, but tonight he doesn't have much. Drops his pad level. Look at the hit again. That's Bruce Irvin out of West Virginia. You know, I asked Pete about a year ago, when did you get the aha moment with Bruce Irvin? He said, when I recruited him out of junior college and lost him to West Virginia, I knew he was going to be special. Now Palmer with a shotgun on second down and 10. We'll keep it on the ground, Ellington. And the rookie at about three. Still third down and long coming up again. And that's been the Cardinals' problem all season long and all night long. And, and it's kind of the puzzle that Seattle presents you. If you can't run the football, which they don't allow you to do because of their front, then you've got to deal with the most difficult part of the team, which is great pass rushers and, and great defensive back. Last game and a half, but all Seattle. Carson Palmer crossing route, got it complete to Michael Floyd. He got a first down and got a big block from Larry Fitzgerald and picked up about seven more yards. <laughs> Larry Fitzgerald, so good. And a nice job by Michael Floyd getting off Richard Sherman's coverage. It's a shallow crossing route. One of the receiver. best routes you can run eligible. against press man. Look at the block. Bang. Very smart. Drop the shoulder pad. And look at Fitzgerald come back here. you got to get your head across and drop your shoulder pad on it or they'll call the flag. Really smart play by Fitzgerald. Walter oh, Thurman got a mouthful of number 11. <laughs> First down, Cardinals in Seattle territory. Trying to take advantage of what their defense did on the stop. And again, Mendenhall, no game. Irvin with the first contact there again. Malcolm Smith as well. And we're down to the eight-minute mark here in the first half. And, and as difficult as it, as it is to run the football, I applaud the fact that they're trying to slow it down. They're, they're trying not to put their quarterback at risk with third and ten plus like they have all game. Empty backfield for Carson Palmer on second down and ten. Five receivers set the head out. Going to be a quick throw on a wide receiver screen to Jerron Brown. And Brown got about nine. It'll bring up third down and short. You know, Lyle Senline, the center, did a really nice job getting out front. Watch him get out front now. He doesn't really get a piece of anybody, but he Number creates seven, enough six, space so that the receiver, Brown, can get in behind him. There's the space. There's the cut. That's an excellent job. So now they've got a third and short, something they haven't had for most of the half. 
<laughs> Bruce Arians calling the shots over there, not only the head coach, but the play caller. Mendenhall. Hit in the hole, trying to back his way to the first down. I think he's going to be short. K.J. Wright was holding on for dear life, the middle linebacker. Well, you got to block Red Bryant, too. That's hard to do. Yeah, that Nate Potter, who's the extra tackle in the game, whiffed on Red Bryant. Red Bryant tries to tackle him there. The ball almost comes out, and then all does a good job securing it. Well... They're about the length of the football shy. And the Cardinals down 14 at home. Time to go. Fourth down. Mandenhall stuffs it up in there and he's got it. Didn't get much, but he got enough. Basically just had to get it to the 30-yard line. As they umpire bodies, the fans realizing they got the first down. And they're hanging tough in here with their team down two touchdowns. I like the way Bruce Arians' group's hanging in. Last week against San Francisco, we talked about the two interceptions, the early field goals. Heck, they gave up a safety. But their defense hung in. Carson Palmer made some plays as the game went along. Give him some credit. Larry Fitzgerald's the slot man to the top, and now he comes in motion on first down at the 29-yard line. Mendenhall going to be hit for a loss this time. Clinton McDaniel. Right here. I mean, they're, they're really having problems. I think Arizona's offensive line, that's a poor job by the left tackle, Sowell. Sowell was cut by Indy. Obviously, the coaching staff here, Bruce Arians, knew, knew Sal from his time in Indy. They really missed a quality left tackle on the side of the line. Again, Carson Palmer by himself in the Cardinal backfield. On second and 12, the throw is knocked down by Brandon Browner. <laughs> they just compete so much out there. Rookie out of Clemson, Brown. He's got Browner draped all over him. Watch the inside arm in the strip. Perfect. Yeah. Brad, I'd love watching these guys in safety. They're well coached and aggressive. Carson Palmer passing on third down tonight. He's four for four to four different receivers. He's got his hands full on this one, though. Third down and 12. Has to move in the pocket. Running for his life, and the ball's knocked out of his hands, but it goes out of bounds. That's great hustle by Adrian. Oh, my goodness. And Abel ran probably the equivalent of a 40-yard dash here. He missed them from the one end. Watch Abel coming over here. Okay, he tries to strip there, doesn't get him. Look at the hustle from behind. Now he gets it. That's not going to make your passing hand feel any better either, <laughs> the way he got that one. They're just getting, that was four-man pressure. They're, they're getting to him with four. They're getting to him with five. It's a tough day for Carson Palm. Jay Feely's going to try to get the Cardinals on the board. Just inside of 50 yards from 49. Kick on the way. And Mr. Dependable, he's been around a long time. He knocks it in. Four minutes, two seconds remaining in the half. But Cardinals finally get on the scoreboard. Seattle, though, with the lead on the road, 14-3. Michael, next Thursday night, we'll see Cam Newton and the Tampa Bay Bucks led by Doug Martin, another one of those guys that carries it 15 to 25 times a game. Thursday night football from Tampa. Bucks need a win. And they're in Atlanta this weekend. They'll try to get off the schneid there. And then we'll head down there next Thursday night. Yeah, Carolina needs a win, too. They've got to stay competitive. And, and Cam Newton, I'm anxious to watch his development as a young quarterback. Jermaine Kirsch will bring it out of the end zone and maybe shouldn't have. Nice play by Smith on the special teams. Drops him inside the 15-yard line. So four minutes for Seattle to work. They've got two of their timeouts remaining, but they don't have great field position. 
And they've had great field position, really, all year long. Their average starting spots at 32-yard line, which isn't bad. No, no. And remember, I think we're going to see a little Russell, Russell Wilson with his legs on this drive right now. First snap of the game, zone read ever since he hasn't needed it. Cardinals defense came up with a big stop on a fourth down. Now they'd like to get a stop and give it back to their offense here in the waning moments of the second quarter. Tate in motion. They fake it to Marshawn Lynch. And wow, Russell Wilson says, I got to get rid of this thing. Matt Shaughnessy's right in my grill. And they've been coaching that all week. The edge rushers for Arizona and being aware of bootleg. Really good job by Shaughnessy staying home, forcing the throw. Second down and ten. If they can get any kind of defensive play here to force a third down, this place is going to come unglued. The fans are trying to help, that's for sure. Wilson. Trouble coming from behind, and down he goes. And the ball is out. It's still loose, and it's picked up by the Cardinals. Calais Campbell's got it. Matt Shaughnessy made great back-to-back -back plays. Campbell may have gotten the football, but Shaughnessy makes the play. Watch 91. Remember, with Russell Wilson, the play's always alive. He spins, strips, balls out. Poor job by Russell Wilson. He clearly sees him. Watch his eyes. He's going to see him right here. Put the ball away. Nice job by Shaughnessy on the strip. Let's see if it's out. No doubt. Oh, yeah. First and goal. Arizona. Opportunity here is calling Carson Palmer and company. Down two touchdowns just moments ago. And now an opportunity to get it to 14 to 10. Mendenhall is in, touchdown. His best run of the night is a three-yard touchdown. And I thought Darren College, the left guard, did a phenomenal job, as did Sal. Watch College get over here, and Sal work hard, too. Really like 71. He works hard. They both get a body on a body. Nice cut by Mendenhall. Touchdown. Jay Feely's point after. Just like that, it's 14-10. to 10. Ten unanswered points. Shaughnessy with the big defensive play on Russell Wilson. And then Mendenhall does the rest. With NFL on location.com, get event ticket packages to the NFL premier events throughout the year, like Super Bowl 48, the 2014 NFL Pro Bowl, and the 2014 NFL Draft, all direct from the NFL. Visit NFL on location.com today. In a matter of less than minutes, we went from 14 to nothing to a ball game, partner. 14-10. Yeah, if Matt Shaughnessy was an actor, that those two plays would go on his Emmy reel. <laughs> Still a lot of time left for Russell Wilson and company, depending on where they get the football. And this time, they'll get it at the 20. So Russell Wilson, who makes very few mistakes, made one on the last series. Big stop on fourth down by the Cardinals defense. And then another big play to give him the ball at the three-yard line. A four-second score. And that's where we are with 340 remaining in the half. Well, this Arizona defense with Todd Bowles as the coordinator, they're a bunch of fighters. This is a good team. Lynch pulls his way for maybe three. There's 
Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator. He was telling us yesterday the problem with Russell Wilson, there's a play that's called, and then there's the play that Russell Wilson creates on his own. I watched all his runs and broke them down to planned runs and spontaneous runs, and they were all exciting. Sidney Rice, who has a touchdown touch tonight. Out to the top of your screen. The throw's going to be to the fullback, Coleman. And Coleman, Shaughnessy runs him out, but he's got a first down. Let's check in with Alex. Brad and Michael, Russell Wilson has also been pretty impressive to Arizona quarterback Patrick Peterson, who calls him the best mobile quarterback in the entire NFL. He says he has the ability to run, of course, we all know that, but he said what makes him different is he's not looking to run. Of course, they came into this game uh, with containing him as the critical thing. Kind of mixed reviews. I guess they've been able to do it parts of this game. So far, not too bad. He had one design run that got a first down. That pass, though, got him a first down at the 31. And a quick throw out to Zach Miller, who also has a touchdown catch here in the first half. Coleman caught his sixth pass of the year a couple of minutes ago, and he's down on the sideline. And they don't have another fullback because Spencer Ware is not up tonight. If he can't go, that hurts their two-back run game. Second and short as we approach the two-minute warning. You would think this would be Marshawn Lynch time. He's going to be dragged down short, though. Calais Campbell, is he having a first half or what? <laughs> 159 the remaining. Two, minute two minutes. Good ball game. 14-10 Seattle. Stay tuned to the end of the half for the Lexus Halftime Show. Rich and Dion, Coach Kurt and Michael standing by to bring you first half highlights and analysis. Plus Peyton Manning's return to Indy. That's all coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show, which is 159 from now. Brad Nessler, Mike Mayock, Alex Flanagan. And our Thursday night football in a 14-10 game and a big third and one right now for the Seahawks. They start with an eye backfield, then they send out Kellen Davis, the tight end wide one way, and Marshawn Lynch the other. And Russell Wilson calmly over the middle for the first down at the 46 to Zach Miller. Really smart. Came out in a heavy run formation. Converted to an empty backfield and just throwing catch with Zach Miller. So still plenty of time for the Seahawks offense. 139 and counting. Two timeouts remaining. Robert Turbin checks back in to Seattle's backfield with Russell Wilson. He fakes it to him, and he's got to get this one out of his hand in a hurry, too, because this time it was Carlos Dansby coming like a steam engine. Yeah, you want to talk about discipline. Last time it was Shaughnessy. Now watch Dansby here. Ten-year veteran, play action the other way, stays parallel to the line of scrimmage. Wilson doesn't fake him out. Love the discipline. Luckily, Zach Miller was in the area code, or that could have been grounding. Exactly. Second down and ten as it is. Wilson on second and ten, play fake, pressure comes, he steps right up in the pocket. He got positive yardage, but they bring him down, maybe with a pickup of two. And John Abraham came like a house on fire off the edge, and I think that flash of color caused him to bring it down. Now, he's coming off here working on a tight end. He wins immediately. Wilson sees it, has to climb the pocket, and again, a good job from the inside out. John Abraham, the old 14-year pro out of South Carolina, can still bring it when he's healthy and rested. Biggest third down of the game for the Cardinal defense. Wilson, again, flushed out of the pocket. And did Rice catch it? No, incomplete. And he's going to Pete Carroll saying, Coach, I got this. See at the very end here, he's in bounds, obviously. Does the ball help him? I mean, excuse me, does the ground help him catch the football? Because the hands are underneath. And remember, because of the time left in the half, this is not a Pete Carroll situation. This is up in the booth. The previous play is under review. So they are looking at it 
Again, diving attempt by Rice. Trying to get those elbows together and get the palms up, and he kind of pins it against his body. And with with the side flying there, it's kind of hard to tell. It really is because both hands are underneath. The elbows are closed. He's still fighting right there to get possession. And I don't know where his knees were at the end of that play. There, there's an awful lot of components to this because he's also close to the sideline. Sidney still in the headlinesman, and then he's trying to tell his head coach. See, see if, if he controls this thing before he gets to the sideline. He's underneath. Both hands are underneath. Look at his feet right now. And the ball's still squirting around, and his feet are out of bounds. I don't know if he ever fully possesses that. Heck of an effort if it wasn't a catch, that's for sure. And it might be a catch. I mean, he got the hands under. See how the feet slide right here? Maybe he has it. The official is right on the play. This would be a huge difference. Obviously, it would be a first down for the Seahawks with still some time left in the half. Or it would be a punting situation, and the Cardinals will get it back with 25 or 30 seconds remaining. I'm not even sure which way to go here, Brad. He gets the hands underneath. I don't think he touches out of bounds until he's got control. His knee is... He's not out yet. Looks like both knees are touching there. I'd be tempted to call that a cat. I would be too. After review, the receiver caught the football. It never touched the ground. It is a catch. It'll be first and ten for Seattle on the 35-yard line. Big difference, huh? Huge difference. Fourth and eight versus a first down. And Russell Wilson threw that one running for his life. And, and it was Tyron Matthew bringing the pressure. Tyron Matthew ran over Zach Miller. So they pick up 16 on third down and eight. When the Cardinals desperately needed a stop, they don't get it. And they're very close now to field goal range. 35-yard line at 8. That's 43 and 10. It's 53 right now. Final two minutes has not been good for Arizona. And here they are again with 36 seconds remaining. And the Seahawks on the march. You got this thing back to a manageable football game. The worst thing you can do is give up a big play. Field goal, not so bad. To be down a touchdown at halftime, you're in good shape. Yeah, especially since you haven't been able to run the ball. You haven't been able to throw the ball, yet you're only down 14-10. Well, we got everybody wearing stripes out there, except you and I. <laughs> you have a stripe tie? No, I'm sorry, that's Paisley. Never mind. Look at that guy. Pretty cool night. Not with Dad. Don't have to worry about school tomorrow. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that guy's not going to school tomorrow yeah. either. I'm not sure where Dad is, though. <laughs> I don't think he's out with Dad. Long discussion. I don't know what this is about. After the review and the catch. Unless it's a timing situation. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Maybe Terry McCauley will let us know. Seattle is charged with a timeout. The replay reversal created a running clock. Normally it would be a 10-second runoff. Seattle's elected to use their timeout. Seattle has one timeout remaining. So they would have been down to 26 seconds. They choose to take the timeout to prevent that from happening. It gives them a little more time to work, and they still have one timeout remaining. I'm going to get Pete a call into Dean Blandino. Now that the smoke is cleared, it's first down Seattle at the 35. Trying to add to a four-point lead. Wilson shifts the other Wilson, Luke Wilson. The tight end and tight on the right side to help block in his shotgun. Blitz coming off the corner. Wilson fires. Caught. Back shoulder throw. Jermaine Curse. And another first down, Seattle. Yeah, he knew Jeremiah Bell was coming off the edge, off the slot. 
He's coming this way, so he's going to throw back this way. Good coverage. Back shoulder. Nice catch. And inside the 20 again, just outside the 18-yard line. Another Seattle first down. And now a desperate Arizona defense trying to prevent a touchdown here in the final half minute of the half. On this drive, almost perfect. Wilson fires into traffic. Tipped. Golden Tate almost caught it. it. Was broken up back there by Carlos Dansby. I think it hit Dansby in the back, and he says, not this time. Yeah, Dansby, his job is to run underneath it, which he does. The ball, you're right, Brad. He almost caught the football, Golden Tate. That's a heck of a job by Dansby. At the very last second, gets his arms out. That's not even a small window. That's a porthole he tried to throw that thing <laughs> into. 25 seconds till halftime. Empty backfield for Russell Wilson. Good matchup at the top of the screen. Low snap. Looks left. Wants to come back right. Has to throw high. Incomplete for Tate. Patrick Peterson was all over it out there. And Darnell Dockett was coming around the corner putting the heat on Russell Wilson. Third down and 10. Yeah, there was heat coming from Marcus Bernard and Dockett. They sandwiched them. You're going to see heat coming from inside and from the other way. Bernard does a nice job coming out. This is the play the Cardinals have to have right here. Third down and 10. Seattle took over at their own 20 with 340 left. This is the 12th play of the drive. Huge, huge snap right here. And I think Wilson's going to take his last time out. Yep. Running out of time on the play clock. 30-second timeout. So now 19 seconds remaining, and now they don't have a way to stop it. they got to go to the end zone or exactly try to get right. what they can and then spike it in a hurry. Because you're talking about potentially plus or minus 14, 15 seconds to run your field goal team out on the field, set up, and execute a kick. There's 19 on the clock. So, Brad, I think you're spot on. It's got to be in the end zone or throw it in the 10th row and kick the field goal. <laughs> well, he doesn't miss inside 45, at least for a long time. 14 out of 15 on the year for Stephen Hauschke. Bruce Arians' team was down 14 to nothing. They came up with a fourth down and inches stop. Just had to go 26 yards for Jay Feely's field goal. And then a big play by Shaughnessy on a strip sack and a three-yard touchdown run by Rashard Mendenhall. That's where we're sitting right now. 14 to 10 with 19 ticks left in the half. Wilson on third and 10. Oops, movement all over the place. Wilson, running for his life, has to throw it away again. False start. Offense number 73. Mm -hmm. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Michael Bowie, the rookie right tackle. Bowie right here. Seventh-round pick. Northeastern State. Now it's third down and 15. Back at the 23. Wilson on the gun. Pressure again. On the run, Wilson. And he gets away. Down inside the 10, but the clock is running. And there's a flag down as well. Holding. Offense number 60. 10 yard penalty. Third down. Talking about Max Unger, the center. Double A gap pressure. Turbin, the tailback. Tailback gets the block. Here's the hold right in the middle of the screen. Now, this almost works against Arizona here because the clock would have run out. With the holding call, the penalty takes it back to a longer field goal for Hoskins. It'll be a 51-yard attempt. The longest he's hit this year is 48. Steven Hoskins to try to make it a seven-point lead 
late in the quarter. Kick on the way. And that is good. Flag is down. Flag down again. Offside call coming against Arizona. Offside. Defense number 31 lined up in the neutral zone. Penalties decline. The field goal is good. 51-yard field goal by Hoshka. But that's not bad. It could have been worse. Could have been much worse. And, and here's a team, Arizona, that in the first half, Brad, they've got a grand total of 22 rushing yards and 47 passing yards. And they're, they're still within a touchdown. Their defense played well, yep. and their touchdown drive was all of three yards after a turnover. So a 12-play drive that went 47 yards for Pete Carroll Seahawks in the last three and a half minutes. Actually, 335, and they get the Hoshka field goal for a seven-point lead. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see Mr. Hoshka just line drive one to end the half. Something to build on for Arizona with those stats. Mike just read to you that they are only down a touchdown. Brad, it would have been real easy down 14 nothing to just kind of throw it in. And remember, Golden Tate went 54 yards on a punt return that would have been a touchdown, but there was an illegal block, and that's right. when things kind of turned around a little bit. You're exactly right. So they're, they're, they're fighting their tails off. They're fortunate to be in a ball game. And I think second half is going to be fun. And there's the line drive. Taken on a hop to 29 by Tyron Matthews. He's got to watch out for this yeah. guy, though. Tyron Matthew got stuck pretty good as he got out to the 33-yard line by Jeremy Lane. And that that'll bring the, the first half of the to first a close. Half. Good first half, though. End of the first half. 17 to 10, Seattle in front. Stick around. Rich and the guys with the Lexus Halftime Show is coming up next. Hi, I'm Larry Fitzgerald. Welcome to my city. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals. Going to throw it long. Got a man. Touchdown. The long Fitzgerald tipped and intercepted. Perfect strike. Touchdown. And the ball is out. Mendenhall is in. Touchdown. The second half does start now. 17 to 10, Seattle on the road with a touchdown lead. As we check out our Volkswagen first half game summary. Total yards, 69 for Arizona. 210 for the visiting Seahawks. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Mike Mayock. 22 yards rushing for Arizona right now. Russell Wilson's 12 out of 18 with two touchdowns, and still it's just a one-touchdown difference. Yeah, the numbers don't say seven-point differential. Give Arizona credit on defense. They hung in there, and they made some plays. Well, if they hang in there again in this third quarter and can get a stop to open up the third quarter, they'd be in great shape. But that guy has been dangerous all night. He has made one mistake. So has Carson Palmer. His... 12th interception of the year, although that was a great play by the secondary to get that tip and the pick by Thomas. Second half is underway. It will start at the 20-yard line on the touchback. People ask me, why do I like Seattle's defense so much? It starts with their DBs. Look at Chancellor right here on a 300-pound tackle. He buckles them, makes the tackle. He's the enforcer on the back end. Now, why? Look at Brand Brown, Brandon Browner. Man to man on Fitzgerald. Turns, tips the ball in the air, and here comes Earl Thomas with the best range of any safety in the league. And then finally, off the edge. Just one of several edge rushers. Clemens one on one with Sal. They beat you up with D backs. Their linebackers all can run, and then they got all kinds of pressure guys up front. They're There's fun those to watch. two big corners right there. <laughs> they won't have to play for a while, depending on what Russell Wilson and the offense do. First snap of the third quarter is Russell Wilson keeping. 
And going for about four yards as we check in with Alex. Adam Michael, certainly a tale of two quarters in the first half of this game. I asked Pete Carroll at halftime, I said, I thought it looked like you might put up 50 points on this team or more after your first quarter performance, and he said, well, we still might. Pete Carroll talked a lot this week about holding on to the football and executing on offense in the red zone, two things that they haven't done particularly well in this game. We'll need to as it goes on, and you guys, Derek Coleman out, the fullback in this game for the rest of the game with a hamstring injury. And yeah, that puts... Zach Miller, the tight end in as the fullback spot here. Alex on the second man through. Wilson knocked the ball is out again, but it's recovered by Michael Bowie. And Bowie needed to get it because he's the guy that lost John Abraham. So on the right side of the line, this is a mismatch right here. Abraham's going to get by him with speed, strip the football, it's out, and Michael Bowie jumps on it. That is career sack number 123 for number 55. And just what the doctor ordered for the Cardinals and their fans, a third down and 16 to open up the third quarter. Wow, Lynch hit immediately. Great move. Talk about a gap pressure, the pressure between the center and guards. Arizona, and I think Todd Bowles' favorite defense on third down is they're going to bring pressure. Watch Washington shoot the gap way too quick for the center, Max Unger, and that's a big play by Darrell Washington, who, remember, was suspended for four weeks. But when he's playing with technique, I think he's going to be a top 30 or 40 player in the entire league. John Ryan deep in his own end zone. Patrick Peterson waits on the other end. They haven't given him many opportunities this year. They won't hear either, but the fair catch. I think he's bumped by his own guy, although Maxwell is down there on the special teams. But just what Arizona wanted. A stop, a strip sack, and now the punt. Peterson takes it on a fair catch around the 48-yard line. <laughs> Justin Bethel gets jammed back into him. Carson Palmer and the Cardinals offense going to have great field position with which to work. Blocked into the receiver. First down. Their own 48-yard line. Looks like Peterson's holding his right hand. Yep. Well, that's not good for the Cardinal defense. Carson Palmer, pressure from behind. Has to throw it away, incomplete. Closest guy was Andre Roberts, but it was Bruce Urban giving chase. Yeah, Brandon Meebane gets pressure right up the middle. Here's Peterson, right hand gets hit by his own player. And remember, when you're a corner that loves to play press man, your hands are very, very important. Yeah, for sure. Second down and 10. Larry Fitzgerald. He's only been targeted twice tonight with one catch for 12 yards. He's in a slot to the left side on second down and 10. Palmer. This one's tipped, broken up by Richard Sherman, but a flag comes in late. Sherman had great coverage. Pass interference. Defense number 25. All at it first down. Under Sherman, six foot three, covering Michael Floyd. Now he anticipates the dig or the deep inside route. Your right hand can go on the back as long as you don't manipulate him with that back hand. I'm not a big fan of that call. I, I think the defensive back has just as much right to the football as the wideout. And Michael Floyd needs to be more physical. First down of the 36. Mendenhall trying to take it wide, and again, very little running room for the Cardinals tonight. A pickup of two. How many corners do you see tackle like this, Ness? They look like outside linebackers. Don't they? Yeah. Just body type. Look at Brandon Brown. I mean, you're talking about 6'4", 221. Drops his weight, makes the hit, and there comes Chancellor. Who's 6'3", 232. That's just mean. <laughs> 24 rushing yards for Arizona tonight. See if they can get some passing right. yards for Carson Palmer. Second down and nine. Palmer fires incomplete intended for Fitzgerald and broken up by Sherman. Yeah, he wanted 38 Ellington there. Sherman came off Fitzgerald to make the play. 
So Ellington's going to come out of the backfield. Ellington comes out of the backfield. Sherman comes off of him. And the ball was intended for him. You can't have two guys in the same spot like that, can you? Yeah, here he comes out of the backfield. And now exactly right, Brad. So there's a mistake either by the quarterback where he's throwing or the two wide receivers, two receivers being in the same area. Yeah, they were only three yards apart. Third down and nine, empty backfield for Carson Palmer. Throws off his back foot, but it's a good throw, and it should have been caught Andre Roberts. Let it get out of his hands. Walter Thurman was over there to make sure he couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, you have got to have strong hands with these guys because they never give up. There's a hold. Now watch him strip the football. Ball's in his hands, but he strips it. You've got to be aware they're coming after it. There's the... Got to catch that football. It's a drive extension. Jay Feely's going to try a 52-yard field goal within his range, his career long. Remember, he hit a bomb against Buffalo from 61. Here's Feely to try to close the gap. And it is closed. Three more for the Cardinals. They would have loved to tie it up, but they're going to take it the way it is. 11-48, third quarter, 17-13. Thursday Night Football is brought to you by Volkswagen. That's the power of German engineering. And by Microsoft Surface. Click in and do more. Speaking of Surface, this is how we get the field in. The University of Phoenix Stadium. How cool is that? Yeah, they roll it in and out. So the Cardinals on their home turf. Held Seattle on its opening possession. Only had to go 17 yards after the short punt to get Jay Feely in range for a 52-yard field goal. Darrell Bevel, offensive coordinator of the Seahawks, talking things over with his quarterback on the sideline. 17-13. Janae Curse again will take a knee. Now, if Arizona's going to win this football game, it's going to be the defense that keeps them in long enough to do it. Abraham is a mismatch on the rookie Bowie. He's beat him like a drum all night long. A-gap pressure, Darrell Washington, too quick for Unger. They're flying around. Todd Bowles has his guys making plays, and the defense is keeping them in this game. And the defense urging on the crowd. Couple of sacks, force fumbles. Only 70 yards of offense and still in it in a four-point game. Thanks to those guys in red right out there on defense. Here's a quick slant. Golden Tate puts the brakes on. Nice spin move. Tate across the 40 out to the 43-yard line. Stops and starts in a hurry and picks up 25. Let's see if the right hand's bothering him at all. He, oh, he just gets opened up. That's a great job by Golden Tate. He drives him outside, comes back under on the slant. That's an excellent job by Golden Tate of getting Patrick Peterson to open his hips to the outside so he could come back under. And Golden Tate huh? down after his third catch with his biggest gain of the night at 25. Peterson getting a little bit of a breather. We got Great corners in this game, oh, yeah. arguably, when you're talking about Richard Sherman and Patrick Peterson, Darrell Rivas is listening to me in Tampa Bay, but they're three <laughs> of the best around. Quarterback Patrick Peterson back on the field after hurting his right hand. If you take a closer look at it, you'll notice that he has two of his fingers taped together, the index finger and the middle finger, so he might be a little bit limited with his hand use tonight. Something he will need in this game. Oh, no doubt, Alex, thanks. And here's the throw, Peterson in the general vicinity of Jermaine Curse. Talk about a secondary that that's finger problems. Former starting safety Rashard Johnson lost the tip of his finger yep. a few weeks ago inside his glove. Again, here's Peterson fielding that punt and his own teammate running into that right hand. And thus, the fingers taped together. And by the way, Curse beat him back underneath just like Golden Tate did on the previous snap. And as good as Peterson is, that might be a little bit in his head right now that he can't use that hand very well. Second down and 10 for the Seahawks in the 45. And it's going to be Wilson keeping. And again, 
Nice pickup. Got about seven yards. Got out of bounds without having to get tackled again. He does that probably better than any of the young quarterbacks with this read option. Yeah, they're, they're going to try to defend it this way. The end down, the linebacker around. This is the third time he's pulled it. Both the end and the linebacker went down. That's an automatic pull. And because he's a smart quarterback and doesn't want to get hit, instead of taking it up inside, he bounces it out and finds the sideline. We said to him last night, do you like running the football? He said, no, I really stand back there and rip it. Yeah. And he can rip it, by the way. If you think he's got a possible alarm, he does not. Stand next to him, watch him throw a football. Third down at three. Here comes a blitz. Wilson in trouble. And dragged down as he throws it. It's caught. Oh, caught by the tight end, Zach Miller. But were his knees down? Apparently, it's a first down. The end of the play. Washington has him. The ball's out. I think that ball's out. There's one of those plays that he creates when things look bad. That was a linebacker X stunt. Arizona loves that. Washington and Dan be cross. They get a free runner, but the quarterback's so good, he makes up for a lot of errors. Play action. Wilson fires, completes. Doug Baldwin. And he's got it down near the 26-yard line. And he beat Matthew on this play. Nice route by the slot. I, I really like this Baldwin kid. Lightly thought of coming out of Stanford. And now Seahawks going with a little tempo, Mike. Yeah, I like that. Got him on the run a little bit. First down. Again, Wilson will keep it. Heading to the far sideline. Run out of bounds by Bell after a pickup of three. Yeah, and that's an automatic keep, okay? They got the tight end, Zach Miller. Watch him on an arc release and block. There's the fake, the arc release. Now, if he gets to Jer Jeremiah, Jeremiah Bell blocked, he can get to the edge. But good job by Bell fighting it off. Next point, look at the eyes. Arc release by the tight end. Now, if you hook him, you got something. They didn't do as much of this in the first half, but as you said, with Derek Coleman, their fullback out, their running game's changed a little bit. Yeah, and Zach Miller can't block like the fullback can. Marshawn Lynch, cut back. First down, spin move, bullying people down to the five-yard line. <laughs> That's him. I, I think you got to get him into beast mode. you got to get him some more touches. Now that's 17 yards on that one. That's only his 12th carry. There's the cut in the hole. Now watch him square his shoulders, drop his pad level, and start to deliver a punishment right in here. Legs churning. I love watching this kid play football. Just inside the six. First and goal, Seahawks. The fade to the corner. Tips away. Gerard Powers, nice play defensively on Kirsch. Interesting. They wanted no parts of Patrick Peterson, so they come down to Kirsch, who's really their fourth wide receiver. So that's the fourth wide receiver against the number two corner. And get Powers, who's a lot shorter, some props for this. Look at him. He finds the football, which a lot of corners don't do. Knocks it away. Heck of a play by Gerard Powers at five, nine and a half. Extra tight end on second down and goal. Lynch. A hard shot and Lynch to the goal line into the end zone. Touchdown. He ran over Dockett and knocked Dockett's helmet off. Wow. Five-yard touchdown run through some serious traffic. Watch Dockett, number 90. The helmet comes off. Lynch could care less. Play being reviewed. 8-13 remaining in the third quarter. My only question is whether the elbow was down. Right. Marshawn Lynch, two big runs in that series, including a 17-yarder. Okay, there's the hand, there's the elbow, but we don't know where the football is. Elbow clearly down. The question is, where was the full football? Right there, now. 
I, I think it's before the goal line. My gut tells me that. I'm not sure a picture is going to tell me that. We'll continue to look at that. Now, here's where you can see the helmet come off. Right here. You want to talk about dropping a shoulder pad into a defensive tackle. That's awesome. There's the elbow and the football. I, I think he's got to be a couple inches short because once that wrist hits, the hand is okay, but once the wrist, forearm, or elbow go down, he's down. And I think it's got to be just before the end line. Remember, it was called a touchdown on the field. A bang, bang, split second play under review. I still love that shot of him hitting Darnell Dockett. Darnell Dockett's 290 pounds of being around a long time, 10 years in the league. <laughs> he got a face full of shoulder pad. Did he ever? Oh, boy. <laughs> Marshawn standing by himself at about the 18-yard line. After review, the runner's forearm was down with the ball short of the goal line. The ball will be placed on the 6-inch line, third and goal for Seattle. So Marshawn will walk from the 18-yard line back into the huddle. And I think that's the right ball right there, plus or minus the six-inch line. I think I'd give it to him again, though, man. So would I. <laughs> because he just started to get in beast mode. Yeah. And you don't want to take him out of it. Feed the beast. Now, you could probably walk in with play action in Russell Wilson, but I still like feeding the beast here. Russell Wilson tried a quarterback sneak earlier on fourth down and inches and came up short. Brett Bielema, his old coach at Wisconsin, said he was 0 for 2. Told me at halftime right. on those short yardage situations. I think we're going to see number 24. Third and goal. Play fake. Gutsy Carl. Wilson's in trouble. Throws to the back corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Kellen Davis. Trouble. Never in trouble like this. <laughs> if there's no pressure on him and he can just take his time and scan the field, I'm not sure I've ever seen a young quarterback have so much presence. Play action. Kellen Davis is just going to work the back edge of the end line. The quarterback takes his time, scans the field, and puts it on. Marshawn did the heavy lifting. Russell Wilson did the short work to number 87. And Hauschka flags it down. They whistle this extra point net. Defense, 12 men of formation. Five yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. And again, Marshawn Lynch. Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, said when he starts to become a bully, as a team, we become bullies. Right now they're bully in the Cardinals. And I think that's a great way to put it. it, it that was well, the extra point that time is good. Russell Wilson, three touchdown passes on the night. I Russell Wilson this. touchdown. Yeah, I love this, Brad. Look at him. Just calm, cool, collected. There he, there he is. He sees him. I don't ever feel like he panics, Brad. And I'm sure he might not feel that way, but he doesn't show it to the outside world. Big target out of Michigan State with his third touchdown tonight for Russell Wilson. And the Cardinals now trail by 11. Coming up Tuesday, Pat Summerall, the standard in broadcasting, had some demons that almost denied the world of his gift. A story of redemption and a voice etched in time. Pat Summerall, Football Life, Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern, only on NFL Network. And I feel like I'm redundant when I talk about NFL films and the quality of these football lives, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say you're missing something special if you don't take a at that. Carson Palmer from the 20, drops the throw on first down. Complete, Michael Floyd, nice throw and catch, pickup of 11. And one of the things you do to get press coverage to back off you is track motion, use of motion stacks. He's going to come down here like this. Browner's going to back off. 
Now he's going to set and then move again. Now this gives him a clean run off the line of scrimmage in an off-man situation. Palmer recognizes it, puts it on. After the 31-yard line, empty set for Carson here on first down. Pressure from the inside. He got away from that. And now he's going to get what he can. He's out of bounds. Pick up of a couple on the scramble. Yeah, I, I thought Michael Bennett was going to get him. Get a little dip and rip underneath Eric Winston, the right tackle. And again, if you get Carson off his spot, out of the pocket, it becomes much more difficult for Arizona. They haven't had time to try to get anything long. Their longest play tonight is 14 yards. Wow. And only 83 total so far. And that guy's still studying. <laughs> <laughs> well, he came back last Sunday after their game. Went back into the building because of the short week and worked till midnight. Second down and eight. Throw over the middle is complete. Jim Dre, the tight end, and should have the first down. Good recognition by Carson Palmer there. They brought, he, he thought that the uh, linebacker, K.J. Wright was coming. He threw it right in behind him. They bring in Nate Potter. Extra lineman comes running into the huddle. So does Hausler, the tight end. He's a guy you've been waiting for him to break out and do something. Number 84. Larry Fitzgerald goes to the sideline. Zero. First down at the 41-yard line. Yeah, Hausler's production has never come close to his natural ability. Mendenhall. All night he's been trying. And all night he's been getting denied. Time it was Malcolm Smith. Remember Bobby Wagner out of the game. KJ Wright kicks inside. Malcolm Smith, the backup linebacker who can play all three positions. He kicks to their will or, or weak outside linebacker position. And there's some familiarity there because Pete Carroll recruited him also to USC. It's getting worse for Mendenhall, Mike. Yeah. 16 yards on 12 carries. It's Gerald back in there. He's way right down to the bottom of your screen and now in motion on second down and 11. Mendenhall's got some blockers in front this time. Still, he's cut down by Earl Thomas as he got out there around the 45-yard line. And yeah, the left tackle, Sal, did a good job. He's going to throw Irvin up the field, but then he's going to miss the block at the second level. Throw him up the field on the draw. Now look at 79. you got to get a piece of Earl Thomas. And I think if Earl Thomas is a more consistent tackler, he might be the best young free safety in football. Even with that, he's the number one tackler coming into the game tonight. Yep. Five minutes remaining third quarter. Big play here for the Cardinals to try to get something moving at third and five. Palmer off his back foot. It's intercepted. It's Brandon Browner. And Browner is going to take it down inside the ten as he trips at about the five-yard line. Yeah, and it's, a, it's another linebacker X stunt. And, and they're getting three runners pretty much all night long. Watch what happens. They're going to come here and here. Irvin comes around. College can't get him. Palmer takes a hit. Throws a football up for grabs. Browner's all over. Well, Browner, the only guy in that secondary that hasn't had an interception, has one now to set up his team. First and goal. 47-yard return. I just love the way this team plays defense. That's Darren College that's down right now with 4.43 remaining in the quarter. Brandon Browner almost had a pick six and rolls his way down inside the five-yard line. Pro Bowler two years ago, that's his 10th career interception. And they put it down where he finally was touched, which is right about the one-yard line. Yeah. Three years in the NFL, Brad. He had to go up to Canada, play four years in Calgary. Look at Pete. <laughs> well, the turf monster got Brandon Brown, and that's why he's laughing. <laughs> yeah, he's going to take a little heat in, in film this week. Not to mention he can laugh with an 11-point lead right now that's about ready to balloon maybe by another touchdown. First and goal. I think Marshawn Lynch deserves this one. I think he deserves the rest of the evening. <laughs> Hand it to him. <laughs> Here he comes. They're taking him wide, though, and he's not going to get there. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, in fact. 
This defense is really good, and I can't underscore that enough. There's some building blocks for Arizona. Their, their new GM, Steve Geim, he knows he's got look, – look at the, the push up front. Sweezy, the guard, gets beat. They force the bounce. Here comes Matthew, forces him back inside. Look at all the red jerseys. They haven't given up, and, and I give them a ton of credit. Back to the two-yard line. Second down to go. Wilson's going to be in the gun here. Have to think about a quarterback draw at times. At least the Cardinals know they've run an ability. Lynch got there. Touchdown. He had that one covered. Yep. Two-yard touchdown run after the Brandon Browner interception. I'm kind of a fan of the right guard, J.R. Sweezy, who was a defensive tackle. This kid was a defensive tackle at NC State. Seattle saw something they liked in him. He jumped 36-inch vert at the combine. They moved him to offense. A year ago, Darnell Dockett ate his lunch in this game. Tonight, this kid's a completely different ball player. Really likes Sweezy. Oscar's time point after is good. The second interception of the night for Carson Palmer by that guy, number 39. Brandon Browner is what set this up. His return got it down to the one-yard line, and Marshawn Lynch did the rest. 31-13. Thursday Night Football is brought to you by Walmart. Get to the Walmart October Savings Event going on now through October 31st. Now through Halloween, and Halloween night will be in Miami. For the Bengals, they'll be wearing the right colors against the Dolphins. Right now, though, NFC West belongs to the Seahawks, 31-13. Trying to go to 6-1. And, and the Cardinals will have to work from the 20-yard line again. I'm a big believer that your front and your back end have to match up. And what I mean by that is you're going to have a twist stunt up front. You're bringing pressure. Urban comes free, so you've got to play tight on the back end. Browner anticipates the ball coming out early. They get the pressure. They get the throw. <laughs> and Browner should have had the touchdown. There's your legion of boom. <laughs> They're all playing well tonight. Hey, you know, you got a 221-pound corner and a 232-pound safety, and they all run 4-4. Are you kidding me? They're awesome. Patrick Peterson's in there on offense again for Arizona. Palmer the throw, and he got it out to him. All the way out around the 40-yard line. So, the all-pro defensive back playing a little bit of offense. Pickup of 19. <laughs> Bad fingers and everything. He's got the fingers wrapped up. Browner's going to play off him, respecting his speed. Runs him off, get the, gets the hips turned, comes back to the football. That's what speed will do to you. You get those D-backs pushing off a little bit, moving back because they respect your speed. It's a whole different ball game. And Larry Fitzgerald comes off again, those bad hamstrings keeping him out of a lot of plays tonight, and that's why Peterson's trying to help out. Larry only has one catch tonight for 12 yards. Play action. Palmer loads and comes near side. Nice throw out to the tight end. Hausler has finally got a catch. And Hausler lined up as an offset fullback in the backfield. And, and here's a kid who I'm telling you is gifted. Okay, you're going to come out here. This is a kid that's going to run sub 4'6 at 255 pounds. He's got to be a better football player than he's shown so far. He's been nicked up from an injury perspective, but he's got to make plays. To this point in his career, he has not. Two longest plays of the night on this drive. First to Peterson and then 17 yards to Hausler. At the 44 of Seattle. A pressure inside again and no chance for Carson Palmer that time. K.J. Wright almost beat him into the backfield on his drop. And Nate Potter's playing guard. And you're just going to get a little blitz here. Potter's usually the left tackle. He gets held untouched. No recognition of the linebacker coming. I mean, that's a jailbreak. There's not a whole lot any quarterback's going to yeah. do with that. Just get down and don't yeah. fumble it. Yep. Way back at the 47-yard line. So just when they had positive yardage and energy going on offense, the big sack drops them back to second down and 19. And I thought K.J. Wright did a nice job of not tipping that blitz. Wow. 
Oh, Palmer oh, pressure oh. again. Almost got face masked, and down he goes. The left tackle got trucked by Clemens. Oh, my goodness. Bradley Sal got picked up and dropped back in Palmer's lap. Wait till you see this contact, folks. He's going to get under him, bull rush him, right back into Carson Palmer. I'm not sure that wasn't a face mask. But I don't, I don't know about any of that stuff. All I know is your tackles, you're right on the face mask. Well, I mean, you know, he's you're lucky all he's still got his neck connected to his <laughs> shoulder pads. And uh, how he missed that, I don't know. But anyway, Man. same kind of play that happened for a safety last week against San Francisco. Yep. The throw is short to Andre Roberts trying to get some yards after the catch. And Sherman will drop in after an eight-yard gain. Believe it. Fourth down and a whole bunch. Yeah, that was a wide receiver screen, believe it or not. They're just they're just releasing down the field to block and throw it under and hoping to get a run after catch. Zastado set to punt to Golden Tate. The first time he touched one tonight, he went 54 yards for a touchdown, but there was an illegal block on the play that negated it. And this one, he's going to let go to the end zone. And Seattle will have it back with a 31-13 lead. Some of the things going on, these are known flies. Gerard Mayo out for the season, another big loss. For the Patriots at that linebacker position. How about Josh Freeman? Yeah. He gets to Minnesota about 10 days ago, and he's starting this weekend. And Peyton Manning. Is he going back to Indianapolis? I hadn't heard. I heard something, yeah, something about, about that. Yeah. How fun will that be? Andrew Luck and Peyton Manning. And you know what? I think there'll be a day when Andrew Luck will have that number, but I don't think it's this weekend. I don't see Peyton Manning losing that game. Do you? I don't understand why the owner is getting into that whole situation and, and inflaming it. Peyton Manning might be lights out this weekend, man. Talking about Peyton Manning, that was Tom Moore talking about Carson Palmer. And Tom, long-time coordinator for the Colts. For Peyton. Robert Turbin's going the wrong way, but he actually got two yards out of all of that. And I think James Carpenter, the left guard, shaking up on the play for Seattle. All 321 pounds of him. Remember, both tackles are out for Seattle right now. Okun, IR designated for return. Giacomini should be back in the next week or two. And they don't have a lot of depth in that front wall. No, they really don't. Larry John Pierre, I guess, would be the guy that would take his spot. There was so much running around by Turbin, getting tangled up, and there you see getting rolled up yep. on. Oh, hate seeing that. There's so much traffic in there. And the big fella in his third year out of Alabama. It's going to take all three of those trainers to get him up when they do get him up. <laughs> that and a hoist. <laughs> and that is Jean-Pierre that's in there right now. And Tom Cable says, get out there, kid. It's your time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was dancing or fighting. I don't either. What was he doing? And the city will be Tampa next week. Cam Newton going airborne. Mike Williams, company for the Buccaneers. Panthers and Buccaneers next Thursday, 8 o'clock. If you join us in Tampa Bay. Carolina's two and three right now. They need a couple wins to climb back in there. New Orleans with that hot start at five and one. And James Carpenter heading back toward the sideline. You know, I watched a little bit of, of Jean Pierre because he stepped in for Max Unger when he was out for two weeks. I thought he did a pretty good job. Well, Tom Cable thinks he's capable. As he swatted him out there to take over at left guard. <laughs> Tom Cable is really a capable offensive line coach. Boy, I, I, I would love watching him work with his guys. He's a great teacher. Former head coach, too, with the Raiders. There he is. Been around a long time. Central casting. Take a look at that. That's, That's a, football a football face. face. That's a football <laughs> face, pal. <laughs> second down and eight. Sidney Rice in motion. <laughs> Play action for Wilson. And he fumbles again as he's hit. And who's got it? Cardinals say they do. And I think they do. Yeah. 
and, and I think Johnson. I think it was Abraham against the left tackle McQuiston. And this is the only, I mean, I, if I'm Seattle, I'm running the football. But it's over here. Abraham's having a big night. He's going to beat the left tackle McQuiston. Remember, Okun not here. Now that internal clock has got to be ticking for Russell Wilson. Great strip. I mean, John Abraham looked like Superman. He just took off into midair. And the ball comes out, and he and Shaughnessy who created the other turnover that turned into points. This time they do the same thing. Yeah, I don't think Abraham has as many snaps in him as he did four or five years ago, but the ones he has are quality. Falcons would probably like to have him back. They don't have a pass rush. Right. Carson Palmer trying to take advantage of the turnover. To the corner, got his man. And almost a one-handed catch. Actually, Ellington says he caught it, but incomplete. Now, that's the kid we talked about top of the show, Ellington, who I think has got a great opportunity to be a quality player in this league. One-handed. If that ball isn't quite that far, they got a chance to make a play. It's good coverage by Irvin, but they got a chance to make a play there. Cardinals absolutely have to have a touchdown off this turnover. They're good in the red zone, the touchdown guys. Last five times they've had it. They need another one here. Palmer, pressure up the middle, got it complete. Michael Floyd inside the 10-yard line. Where it's going to bring up third down and about three. They're really struggling with pressure up the middle. This time it's Malcolm Smith coming right up the middle, and Palmer gets it out. Third quarter comes to a close. Seattle with a big lead, but the Cardinals are threatening. Thursday night football's fourth quarter set to begin with Mike Mayock and Alex Flanagan, Brad Nessler with you from University of Phoenix Stadium. Final 15, Seattle leading 31 to 13. But the Cardinals try to take advantage of another Russell Wilson fumble. Big third down, and we got movements. Eric Winston, the right tackle move, but was no, I think neutral it was the right end. Defensive. Defense, yeah, number 56. Half minutes to the goal. Cliff Abel's the guy First that kind of fell into the neutral zone, and that's when Winston moved. And Winston did it on purpose, and you have to do it immediately to get the call. And he did a great job. That gives him a first down. Exactly right. So they don't have to worry about third down. They got it automatically, and that's first and goal. At the four. Ellington in the backfield, the rookie. Carson Palmer will drop into the shotgun. Got Irvin, the linebacker, on Fitzgerald. Palmer over the middle, tipped up in the air, incomplete. It was intended for Ellington. Malcolm Smith got a hand on it. Dropped into his zone there. Malcolm Smith is a quick linebacker. It's him right in here, I believe. It's zone coverage. Really good movement on the football by Malcolm Smith. Second down, a goal, and now Ellington will empty that backfield one more time. Carson almost fell down in his backpedal. Got it complete. Nope. Nope. Out of the back of the end zone. Dre, looks like he got one foot, but not two. And this is where not being able to run the football kills you. They've got a grand total of 30 rushing yards. That's a heck of a throw, but Dre doesn't even get one down. They challenge everything. Now you see the left foot out. Third down. And goal at the fourth. Again, Fitzgerald in tight on the right side. Three wide outs to Palmer's left. The throw, overthrow intended for Fitzgerald, who fell down, being covered out there by Malcolm Smith. And here comes the field goal unit to a chorus of booze. They smother you outside. I don't think Larry Fitzgerald has his normal push. I don't think he's, he's even close. I think he's trying to gut one out. Yep. But there was a linebacker, Malcolm Smith, that undercut him, and normally Larry Fitzgerald runs away from him. 
This basically is an extra point for Jay Feely. 22-yard field goal. In the first 15 seconds of the final quarter, pick is up and good. And that closes it to 31 to 16. Marshawn Lynch and the Seahawks have control of the game. They'll have the ball as well when we come back. Thursday Night Football is brought to you by Verizon. Never be without football. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile from Verizon. And by Burger King, where taste is king. Full moon over Glendale. The Cardinals had a first and goal at the four. They had to settle for a field goal. 31-16. Jay Feely to kick. And this one will come out to the 20-yard line again. You're just joining us. Seattle struck first in this ball game with Russell Wilson throwing to Sidney Rice for a touchdown. One of his three. Zach Miller is tight end on a perfect toss. The Legion of Boom has a couple of interceptions of Carson Palmer and then Marshawn Lynch doing some of the heavy lifting to get him down close for another touchdown. So three touchdown passes, two fumbles lost. So that's what's kind of kept the Cardinals and their defense in this thing. And the Seahawks have five sacks on the night. Only 130 yards of offense for the Cardinals. Marshawn Lynch hit in the backfield. Breaks away, gets positive yardage out of it, almost five when it looked like he was going to lose that many. Yeah, that's all Marshawn Lynch. Lynch. There's the cut in the hole away from Alameda to Amu, outside of Campbell. Look at the jump cut. Ball hand on the full football almost by Ta'amu. Brings up second down and six. Two tight ends. One of them, Luke Wilson, on the move. And then the counter to Lynch going the other way. Only about a yard, though. Calais Campbell in on another tackle. Wilson passing tonight on third down. Six for six. Six different guys. Six first down. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's really good. I don't like the two turnovers tonight. I think that kind of blemishes, but he's a second-year player, and sometimes I think we expect so much out of him because right. he's so, so smart and so aware. This would be a big stop for Arizona. Empty backfield for Russell Wilson. Zero blitz. They've got man-to-man -man with no help all over the field. Oop, not a man. Jeez. Abraham in the neutral zone. Free play. Ball's up and incomplete. Yeah, I think he got him. John trying to get a head start in there. Sure Offside. De defense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So it's third down and really about uh, two feet now, I think. That's a tough one. That was an all-out blitz for Arizona. Called zero coverage because there's nobody in the middle of the field. Man to man all over. This is third down and less than one. Bell Bell looking at that play card for third down and two feet. That's a good young coach right there. Right? Lynch, second ever, got it, and about three more, maybe five more. You know, Daryl Bevel grew up in this area. Matter of fact, his father, Jim, was a longtime Phoenix area high school coach, and his dad coached Daryl at Chaparral High School. Pretty cool story, and he, he, he's a guy that last year had two interviews in the NFL for head coaching jobs. Mm -hmm. And if they continue to play the way they have, and I anticipate they will, he's going to be a hot commodity. Yes, he is. Seahawks, seven out of nine on third down tonight. That's how you win ball games. Play action. Wilson fires deep. 
and caught. Golden Tate. All the way down inside the 35 yard line. Heck of a job protecting the quarterback. Watch what happens here. They're going to bring off the edge. The tailback, Marshawn Lynch, gets Abraham. Wilson buys time. Here goes Golden Tate, man coverage against Peterson. Creates separation, big play. How about that throw, sliding to his left? Oh, yeah. Really good protection, great feel by the quarterback, and an accurate throw. First down, the Cardinals 33. And he's got to throw this one away. The snap was low, but the pressure was great coming on the inside, and he had to just get rid of that one. That was the old Bears front. They covered up the center and both guards. 46 look. Frosty Rutgers had a couple big plays tonight. Defense has played their hearts out tonight, but they've been out there too long. Yeah, way too many snaps. Seattle's had 55 offensive snaps. Hey, C5-6. Hey, man, man. Wilson on second and ten will keep it in the hands of Turbin. Broke through a gap and got down to the 27-yard line. Turbin's not a little guy either, 222 pounds out of Utah State. And he'll come out and Marshawn will come back in. If Pete Carroll has been something about something his whole life, is he likes big physical players at every position and you gotta run. And if you look at their tailback position, it's Marshawn Lynch. Backed up by 222-pound Robert Turbin and second-round pick Kristen Michael at 221. They came in number two in the NFL in Russia, but they're not hurting their numbers tonight. Third down and four. Wilson, quick throw to Rice. I don't know if he got the first down or not. Patrick Peterson was right on him. That was a good break on the football by Peterson. Love listening to Patrick Peterson talk about mentoring Tyron Matthew. Tyron Matthew, when the draft came up, Peterson walked in, told Bruce Arian, I'll stand up for this guy. He'll be a model citizen when he's around me, and that is a perfect guy to have around that rookie. That's for sure. He said, I got him, coach. I got him. And I've known him since he was a five foot seven, 150-pound <laughs> high school kid that was my recruit at LSU. Housekin from 42 still hasn't missed inside 45. Three more for the Seahawks. 34 to 16. As the Seahawks are trying to go to the head of the class in the NFC. Happy guy on the left. A guy that's had a rough night on the right. 34-16. As... The Seahawks just went 56 yards in eight plays, a little over four minutes to get that field goal from Hoshka to stretch their lead out. Javier Arenas from about a yard in. And Arenas isn't going to get to the 20 again after the 19-yard line. Now, Larry Fitzgerald's got one catch for 12, and there's a reason. Underneath coverage is attacking him. Thurman from the outside, K.J. Wright from the inside. How about Clinton McDonald, the defensive tackle? Eyes on, Fitzgerald spying him. That's a zone blitz concept. And on the goal line, Malcolm Smith, eyes on him, attack him. Don't let an easy throw for the quarterback. Awareness, especially underneath. I don't know how much that hamstring's bothering him, but they're making it real difficult for Larry Fitzgerald. One catch, five catches away from 800, which would be the youngest guy ever to hit that milestone. I don't think he's going to get it tonight. This uh, pass is tipped by Michael Floyd, trying to tip it to himself with Earl Thomas all over him. Yeah, I thought Earl Thomas held down the arm. It'd be interesting to see on the replay if this is an interference. I thought only one arm could get up. Watch 29 come in. It's man-to-man. -man. Now, see if he's holding down that arm. You see that? He was. He had him in the elbow, didn't he? Yeah, he held down the left arm. That's got to be an interference call. I mean, it was pretty sneaky, pretty cool, but <laughs> it's a call. First team All-Pro last year, has an interception tonight, 14 in his career, four on the season already. 
Palmer hit as he throws again. Got it to Hausler, and that was a good throw just to get it out of there because he was getting hit right in the midsection when he let go of the football. They've got weapons everywhere, and Michael Bennett, who was a defensive end in Tampa, kicks inside as a defensive tackle. He's too quick for guards. He ran right past Fanica. So when you're playing this team, they got three edge guys. They got Clemens, they got Bruce Irvin, they've got Cliff Averill, they've got guys inside, Meebane, McDaniel, Clint McDonald, Jordan Hill. It's the best front I've seen as far as rushing ability. Well, the number two defense in the NFL showing it tonight. Third down and three. Again, pressure up the middle. Down goes Carson Palmer. This time it's Malcolm Smith, the outside linebacker. They do double X stunts on the inside. And he comes. They're going to do X stunt, X stunt, and then the outside backer comes untouched. Malcolm Smith, that the backup linebacker, plays all three positions, had a heck of a night tonight. Look at Pete. He recruited him out of high school. Punt coming up. Pete's got to get out of the way. That is picked up by Sherman. Richard Sherman. <laughs> and they're going to run him down. Loses yardage on the punt return. Just under nine minutes remaining in the ball game. Carson Palmer, no help. And the Batman dance. I don't know if Adam West is watching or not, but... Well, about three hours ago, partner, you said the main thing of your three ingredients, protect your quarterback if you're the Cardinals to have a chance. That hasn't happened. And you knew coming in it was going to be a tough match because this Arizona Cardinals offensive line is not one of the better lines in this league, and I think Seattle's the most dominating front in the entire NFL. Marshawn Lynch into the middle of the pile, runs into Calais Campbell, who's had a great night. But has been out there a long, long time tonight. Tonight's the final game for Jim Shear. They call him the machine. He's been around here 40 years as the assistant athletic trainer and the trainer. I mean, he goes from guys like Larry Wilson and Deardorff to Kurt Warner and Larry Fitzgerald. It's his last game tonight. How about that? Wow. 40 years on the job for the Cardinals. Jim, we wish you the best. Yeah. Congra that's awesome. Congratulations. He's seen a lot of football. Some good, not some, some not so good. <laughs> That's right. Play action. Wilson fires, and it's complete to take. Golden take. Peterson all over him, but the throw was perfect. I'm not sure I'd try to fit that one in at this point in the game up where you are. I mean, that's a heck of a throw. Roll to your left, set your feet. I, I mentioned his arm strength. There were a lot of people that thought coming out that he was the, the, the picture of him, of Russell Wilson, was... Uh, he's this short guy that runs around, but yeah. but he's not a pocket quarterback. Well, if you stand next to him, which I did tonight while he warmed up, and watch him rip the ball around, it, it's really fun. This kid's talented. He's got arm talent. Aaron is challenged. The pass was incomplete. Timeout. Here's another look at Tate. Got it pinned against his shoulder pad. Uh, he might have been out of yeah. bounds. Might be a good challenge by Bruce Arians. We'll find out when we come back. Here's the call coming After up. After review, the second foot went back, came down out of bounds. It is an incomplete pass. It'll be third down on the 30-yard line. Please set the game clock to 8 minutes, 13 seconds. Now you see the left foot down and the right foot out. Arizona is not charged with a timeout. So good challenge by the Cardinals. Instead of a first down, it's third down and about eight at the 30. Hey, you're down 18 points with 8-13 left in, in hey, third hey, and long. Double, 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 double. Hey, right there. Two, 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 yeah. You've got to get after him here. Get on! Go! Oh, and now movement of John Abraham jumps again. False start. I think with the Offense left bar. Offense number 77. Right. Yeah. Five-yard penalty, third down. Remember, James Carpenter's playing on a bad wheel. They got rolled up on earlier, and he's maybe trying to get a little bit of a head start with that ankle hurting. And so that's third down and 13. He was kind of a surprise first-round pick out of Alabama. They wanted him to be their left tackle. Not able to survive out on the edge. Better suited inside. 
Third down has been good to the Seahawks tonight. This is a big one. Third and 13 pressure, and Tyron Matthew on a safety blitz got to Wilson. Looked like LSU, didn't it? Yep. <laughs> on the slot, comes off the slot. Matthew's going to sneak up, and bang, he goes. Right tackle, Bowie stays inside because of the pass protection. He did that constantly at LSU, and then a year out of football, and here he is doing it in the NFL. And he's going back to return the punt as well. Yeah, he's got an innate feel for the game of football. He really does. I got a feeling he's back there because of Peterson's right hand yeah. being injured. I think you're right. He's going to have to call fair catch anyway at the 29-yard line. 46-yard punt, no return. How about your lessons learned, Mike? Well, I'll tell you, when, when a guy goes down, like Alden Smith, somebody's getting an opportunity. And Corey Lemonade came in last week, and I'll tell you what, explosive off the edge, made plays, got a sack for a safety. I think he's got a chance to be special. How about Nick Foles in Philly? Everybody talked about it had to be Michael Vick. I look at Nick Foles, ball comes out on time and with accuracy, and they are putting some points on the board. And finally, the Jaguars had every opportunity to, to lay down against Denver. I give Gus Bradley and his guys a ton of credit. They came in the play. Carson Palmer again flushed out of the pocket. The chase is on. He throws back across his body, and Hausler makes a catch, but it's only about a two-yard gain. Everything's been short tonight, and no explosive plays for Arizona. Look, when, when you run the ball for 30 yards, and Seattle's not going to allow them to run the football, it puts your quarterback and your wideouts in a bad place. Quick slant. There's a second catch of the night for Fitzgerald. Out to the 36. Yeah, he's not moving like Larry Fitzgerald. I, I just was isolating on him there, and he's got no push. He didn't want to use that as an excuse when we met with him yesterday. He said it's an occupational hazard <laughs> to be banged up. And he has been, and he hasn't been himself. But he's a sure-fired Hall of Famer somewhere down the line. Hausler, first down. Down to the 46. Alex? There is a bright side, you guys, for Larry Fitzgerald. Remember, they're playing, of course, tonight on Thursday night, so they've got a bit of a extended bye, if you will, before they play the next game. He has 10 days off, and then they have their regular season bye, so he's hopeful that he can get the hamstrings healed up um, over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it would help this offense, that's for sure. Palmer got rid of it just as he's hit, and Alfonso Smith picks up seven. He's their best pass protection tailback, I think, but he, but he put the ball on the ground in a key situation last week against San Francisco. One carry, one fumble. At that point, it was a 22-20 ball game. Second down and short is nice for the Cardinals. They haven't been in that situation much, and Hausler uh, probably should have had that. Late play. Hausler had big eyes there because Malcolm Smith was coming the Pass other way. Pass interference, defense number 50, automatic first down. K.J. Wright, the guilty party. Hausler in the cross. There's the hold. Basically KJ. gets his right arm right yep. there. Yeah, that was a bad call by me. K.J. Wright was holding the arm and then was <laughs> no doubt that was the reason. Time becoming a major factor here if you're an Arizona fan. Just over six minutes to go. Palmer, nice job by Floyd. Just snaps that one out of the air. Heading to the side. Oh, Larry Fitzgerald just leveled Richard Sherman. <laughs> oh, the second big block of the evening for Larry Fitzgerald. Really good job by Michael Floyd on the crossing route. Catches, catches the ball. Now he's going to start to run away from people. Pick up that picket fence. Bang! And that's just putting your shoulder in there. Sherman will remember that one for a while. Yeah. <laughs> There's some respect from those guys. That's awesome. We asked Larry, does Sherman talk as much to you out there during the game as he does during the week? He said, no, and I don't get involved either. This job's hard enough without talking to <laughs> Don't you love him? Palmer, throw complete after Roberts. He tipped those out of bounds. Yeah, pick up a six. Now, Seattle sacrificing time off the clock for being more conservative defensively. Playing a little more zone. 
laying off their natural instincts. They're predators. They're, they're 11 predators out there. <laughs> and, and I don't think they like backing up in zone. That's a good way to put it. Predators. Including Chancellor and company in that secondary. Second down at four. From the 13. Ellington, the tailback. That's Andre Roberts on the move. Palmer's going to flip it out to Ellington. Got to beat the linebacker. He did. And he tiptoed out of bounds right at the first down marker. Here's Dan Quinn, defensive coordinator. Remember, a couple years ago, he was on this staff. Right. He was on Jim Morrow's staff, and then he was on Pete Carroll's staff. Left to take the coordinator job at University of Florida for two years. And he understands Pete Carroll and, and what's demanded at that position, which is aggressiveness. And physicality. And you mentioned Gus Bradley earlier. Yep. He was the defensive coordinator, now the head coach of Jacksonville. And thus, those moves made. First and goal. Palmer and the shotgun pressure coming. He steps up and zips it. Touchdown. Perfect throw to Jerron Brown, the rookie. One for two. When Carson Palmer can set up on his spot and te step into a throw, it's beautiful. And Brown's route. Ball's a little high, but it's a great catch. Way to go up and get it, young man. Look, look that protection was awesome. It was one of the few times tonight he had an opportunity to step up and through the pocket cleanly. Going for two here. Try to make it a ten-point game. Palmer, the quick throw, the fade to the corner, knocked down by Sherman and set it to Floyd. So it remains a 12-point game. That's the way they like to play defense. Man-to-man, -man, forget the zone stuff, top of the screen, I got you, Back backyard football, eyes on the quarterback the entire time. That's awesome coverage. Well, he might have gotten laid out on that block by Fitzgerald, but he just made up for it to prevent it from being a 10-point game on that play. Carson Palmer, his best drive of the night, though. Eight for eight, including the touchdown. Watch this pocket. Is that gorgeous? Step up and rip it. That's who Carson Palmer is at his best. Step up and rip it. That's what we talked about in the pregame. That's what we talked about in the open tonight, a little over three hours ago. And that's what happens when you keep him clean. Nice drive, huh? Yeah, 71 yards in eight plays, their best drive of the night. Still 434 left. And the Seahawks are going to have their hands team up on this one. Jay Feely has seen about every kind of onside kick in his career that has gone 13 years, including kicking a few to himself, right? Good call. There's only been one successful onside kick in the whole league this year. And this is going to be a pooch. And it's into Neverland. Knocked awesome. out of bounds. Boy, they got it in a spot where there wasn't anybody. I'll say that much. That, that was a pretty cool little kick right there. Here's some of our difference makers tonight and what they've done. Marshawn Lynch, 78 yards and a score. Almost had two. The Seahawks, Golden Tate. Four for 77. Sherman, a couple of passes defending, including that two-point conversion a yep. moment ago. And Earl Thomas, six tackles and his fourth interception of the year. This is cool right here. This was a great little pooch. And I love the play by Kellen Davis, the awareness that all you got to do, you don't have to recover it, knock it out. And Marshawn Lynch drags tacklers for six or seven. What a great weapon to have when you're trying to just waste away four minutes. I, I think there are two of the best young GMs in the league here. John Schneider with Pete Carroll building this Seattle team has done a great job. And then on the other sideline, Steve Keim in his first year at Arizona. I think there's some building blocks on defense. I think what they need is probably at some point a young quarterback, a left tackle, and they need a war daddy on the edge. John Abraham's getting old. Yeah. No timeout. Arizona, they're down to two. Just 
Too much Seahawk defense tonight. Too much pressure on Carson Palmer. I, I was talking to Michael Bennett, the defensive lineman on the field before the game, and I commented on how many rushers they have. He said, yeah. He said, our defensive line coach says we got a bunch of Lamborghinis and you don't know which <laughs> one to drive. <laughs> that's, a tough, that's a tough thing to have, isn't it? <laughs> Too many cars in the garage. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So flag will back it up five yards to second down and seven. Five and one for only the second time, and they've never been six and one, and they're four minutes and change away from that. And, you know, we asked the question before, after 11 wins last year in a playoff appearance, they lost to the Falcons in the divisional round. A lot of people thought they were kind of a sexy choice for a Super Bowl. Hey, they're about to be the best team in the NFC at 6-1. and one. That's all you can ask for. Remember, they have played a close game, and they're only lost to the Colts. Lynch? Oh, my goodness. you got to be kidding me that he got that many yards out of that. Second. I love Charge watching this out. man play football. 30-second timeout. Twitter World likes it when I shut up, so I'm going to shut up here. <laughs> Marshawn Lynch originally... Drafted in the first round, 12th overall by Buffalo back in 07. And he's been the mainstay of this Seattle ground game now for a number of years. And he just finds different ways to pull people over. You asked me at the top of the show how good was this Seattle team. And what I believe is they're going to get both tackles back. They're going to get Percy Harvin back. That's a big weapon that everybody's forgetting about. Huge weapon. They're, they're an average at wide receiver right now, but I think they're the best defense in football. And when you get both tackles and Harvin back, this team gets a lot better. And remember, that's where Sidney Rice catching the 31-yard touchdown pass tonight. And Golden Tate having one of his best nights of the year. You add Percy Harvin in the mix, it's just another weapon for this guy. Get down. And he did, a yard shy of the first down. Probably does the best job of staying out of harm's way of any of those yeah. quarterbacks that run around a little bit. There's that left tackle, Russell Okun. I like what Russell Wilson told us in our meeting yesterday about what well, you asked him what he did in the offseason. Talked about his five camps, right? Yeah, he had 1,400 inner city kids around the country. He had them in the, back in Richmond where he grew up, uh, Spokane and Seattle, and then also the two colleges he went to in Raleigh and Madison. And he said he spent most of his time with kids in football. I mean, not much better than that. He doesn't look a whole lot older than the kids he was working <laughs> That's with true. either. <laughs> there he is. Is that a football face? Just added a third dog to his list at home with him and his wife. This one after two little ones. A Great Dane that already weighs 150 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> High punt. Tyron Matthew has to get out of the way. Takes a bounce up around the 30-yard line. And that's where Arizona will take over. You know, I keep asking you who this guy reminds you of. You came up with a pretty good one as we take it to our Thursday night throwback. Yeah, how about Fran Tarkin? An ability to twist and move, an ability to keep the play alive. I think they both had an innate feel for how to play this football game that is never scripted. And I think what Russell Wilson does so well is that when he escapes, he can throw the football. And I keep reiterating, he does not have a pop gun for an arm. It's a big arm, and being compared to Stark, it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Hall of Famer. And those plays look very eerily similar. It's cool stuff. And again, we said for Russell Wilson, there's the play that's called. And there's the one he creates. And that's what Fran Tarkin did for so many years with the Vikings and the Giants. Carson Palmer trying to find a way to Hausler here with three and a half minutes left, trailing by 12. I'll tell you what he's done, Brad, is he's opened the door up also for some, some non-conventional college quarterbacks. Like Johnny Manziel, those kind of guys that are 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 6 feet are going to look at much more closely because of his success. Good point. You'll be talking about that on draft time, I'm sure. Ad nauseum. <laughs> K.J. Wright is going to be penalized here. There are two fouls on the play. Holding defense number 50. 
holding, offense number 79. Penalties offset, first down. So we'll just do it again. Yeah, the NFL Network does a great job covering draft. You know, we're at the East-West game, we're at the Senior Bowl, we're at the draft itself. We've got a show called Path to the Draft that rolls up to it, and I think we do it more comp comprehensively than anybody out there, and it's really fun to watch these kids get a huge kick out of a guy like Russell Wilson who we saw a couple years ago turn into what he is. <laughs> I have to text or call you on a regular basis during that time to say, how did you know? <laughs> because you watch more film than anybody in the world. I, I don't know about that, but I, I enjoy watching these young guys. I really do. Alfonso Smith gets tangled up on the end of that play. A couple of Smiths, Malcolm yeah. and Alfonso, face-to-face -face or face mask to face mask. Smith on Smith crime. Mm -hmm. Carson Palmer's hit his last 12 passes straight. Second down and two. That's 13 in a row. That's a first down. Well, as you said, the Seahawks defense is playing differently, but they could have used this 13 in a row earlier in the ballgame. They are back in Seattle territory, though, at the 47-yard line. First down as we approach the two-minute warning. Palmer crossing route wide open is Alfonso Smith again. Yeah, I guarantee you the Seattle players don't like this. <laughs> they're looking around going, come on, single high, man coverage, let us go. I don't think they're getting another playoff. That is the two-minute warning. Uh, two-minute two minute warning. Pete Carroll, his team's two minutes away from being the top of the class in the NFC. Thursday Night Football is brought to you by Farmers. The more you know, the better you can plan. Get smarter at Farmers.com. And by the new 2014 Lexus GX. Dare to be spontaneous. Two minutes remaining at the University of Phoenix Stadium here in Glendale. The Seahawks leading by 12 with two minutes remaining. But the Cardinals have the ball at the 38-yard line. It's not over yet, but they are out of timeouts. Palmer throws out to Hausler. Hausler drops the ball. And who's going to get it? I think Senline maybe got all the way out there to cover it, although it went from being a first down to probably not being a first down. Cam Chancellor stripped it. So impressed with how well Chancellor 31 moves at six foot three, 232. In fact, it's a couple of yards almost, a long one, we call it. Carson Palmer over the middle, incomplete, flags fly. And it's going to be pass interference on Byron Maxwell. And again, intended for Hausler. Just got Fire to the pass, holding defense number 41. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. And you can see Byron Maxwell on Hausler, and there's the hold, the grab. Ness, I just got a text message from our cohort, Steve Mariucci. We were talking about Dan Quinn, and he said, Mooch first hired Dan Quinn out of Popstra <laughs> to be a young defensive assistant. There you go. Nice job by you, Mooch. And Carson Palmer goes down. Another sack, Clint McDonald. And that's his seventh sack given up tonight. Wow. There's Mooch. And those guys will be coming up with the Total Access postgame show when we're done, which is just over a minute from now. Palmer has it almost knocked out of his hands and then desperation throw out in the flat. McDonald is a guy, again, that almost knocked it out of his passing hand with 55 seconds to remain. McDonald, Meebane, Tony McDaniel, Jordan Hill, they come at you in waves. That's just the inside guys. I mentioned coming up after the game, Rich and Dion and Kurt, Steve and Michael will be live on the field, breaking down the action of Russell Wilson along with them. That's all coming up. Total access postgame show. And that is less than a minute from now. Well, a minute of playing time anyway. Third down and 16. Palmer completes it, out to Floyd, short of the first down, it'll be fourth, and the clock running. Excuse me, that was Jerron Brown, the rookie who caught the touchdown pass earlier this quarter. 
Cardinals have no way to stop it. They'll snap it here with about a half minute left. Palmer trouble from behind again. Backpedaling and throws it away with 24 seconds remaining. So Seattle will be 6-1 and one for the first time in franchise history. Three touchdown passes by number three. And there's the way it looks in the NFC West. If you ever had any doubt that the Seahawks were for real or they were a threat to win Super Bowl 48, I think they just erased it on the road tonight. And they had a, quite a contingent of fans here at University of Phoenix Stadium that have been cheering them on. All Russell Wilson has to do is take one knee, and his night will be over. He finishes 18 out of 35, 235 yards, and three touchdowns. Marshawn Litch did the rest, and then that suffocating defense of the Seahawks, 34-22 is the final. Two of the best cornerbacks in football. Two coaches with a lot of respect for each other, and then one awfully good second-year quarterback. Don't forget Panthers in the box next Thursday night in Tampa. Hope you're along with us for that one. We'll be back in a minute with a total access post game show. Highlights, analysis, interviews, and press conferences, and Russell Wilson. Stick around. Final 34-22 Seahawks.